I drink your milkshake. You are listening to the Billionaire Podcast Network. Okay, this is the show. Now it's time to uh, become professional broadcasters. Um, I'm, I'm, it's me, your host, Anthony Michael Hall. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm, and, I'm, here uh, with, I'm here with my co-host, Michael C. Hall. Michael C. Hall, yes, sir. <laughs> and <we're>, joining us. <laughs> yeah, and we're we're joined by our guest this week, Michael Hall. <laughs> Michael A. Hall. Michael A. Oh, A. Hall. A. Michael A. Hall. Michael A. Hall. Yes. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yes, this is corn fed. <laughs> this is corn fed with Dalton Brewitt. It's me, your host, Anthony Michael Hall. <laughs> <laughs> and it, hey, that's only on the Billionaire Podcast Network. The Chang There we go. Did I love that? Yeah, yeah, I've been. I, I guess this is the first official, like official episode with the soundboard. We did we did a little soft launch over the Patreon. Yep. And now it's time to really break it out. I still don't really know how to use the like everything it can do. It's, hey, did you I'm, make a word alert button? I have to do. I got to make a word alert. You yeah, make one. I got I got some su- suggestions written down too. We can we can add some more shit. <laughs> yeah, we'll we uh, we'll we'll, uh, we'll workshop some things. Sal, let me get a clean word alert from you. Word alert. One more. Word alert. And one more. Word alert. Okay. And I'll I'll remember that and then I'll I'll cut those out and make some word alerts for you. All right. There we go. <clears throat> Time stamp it. We'll probably I have AI do it much better than I could. No, no. There's no there's only one Sal. There's no um there's no well, let me Sal. do well, let me do one. Hold on. Whoa, word alert. Okay. That's a good, thing. One. That's that. a good one. <laughs> I'll comb through this and get those out of there. But we got, yeah, we got our guest Michael Hall today. Who, uh, Michael, you're you're a proud uh, member of the the Fraternal Order of Corn Fed. You've been in induct. Oh, Damn. nice, dude. Right. Dude, you're you're a big time supporter of all this. So I really yeah. appreciate I think you. To myself, the official lobbyist of the show. I'm gonna buy uh, my influence into this show. Like, I'll just throw money towards all this shit to make things pretty much go my way. We'll see yeah. It'd be a good time. Yeah, you we're definitely you you've thrown a lot of money at this, <laughs> which I I appreciate. Are you so wait? Are you rich? Like, what's your deal? No, I've just been through a lot of shit, and I'm on the other side of it all now. So I understand what you're going through, and hey, see you fail. Oh well, I appreciate you, man. Yeah, no problem, man. Uh, you what about that? your parents? My his parents? Yeah, there's there's a there's a wealth there somewhere, huh? Oh, absolutely not. No. All right. No, my parents got divorced when I was five. You look uh, aff- affluent. Well, they could afford a no, divorce. No. no, I had to do all the shit myself. Yeah, I was say for divorce is for the rich. <laughs> yeah, most, most, most poor divorced, people uh, twenty twenty one stay miserable forever, and they make everybody miserable because they just yeah. can't afford to do anything about their lives. So yeah, I got divorced. So, but I'm on the other side of it all now. Got my shit together. So, oh, you yeah. got divorced? Yes. No, my parents got divorced when I was five. And then I was bitter about oh. that for 35 years. So I you, are you that. divorced? I am divorced as well. Yeah. Okay. So just keeping it, uh, keep it in the family. Yeah. I'm really good at divorce. Unfortunately, I've lived it my whole life. I was the child. Did you call divorced. your, did you call your dad up the day you got divorced and you're like, thanks a lot, old man. Yeah. Uh, in a roundabout way. Yeah. Both parents got a round of ration of shit. Nice. Good. Little, good. Yeah. They deserve it. 
So, <laughs> fuck no, I'm kidding. so wait, are you? So are you? Are you? You're alone now. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I'm single. Oh, I, I gotta go. Yo, that's awesome. <laughs> okay, I, I do have a girlfriend now. Within the last couple weeks, I got a girlfriend now. So is she are... gonna bring over some furniture? Probably. Um, no, I do have furniture here. I got, I got my chaise lounge. I got my adult beanbag. I don't nice. have anything hung up on the walls though. I gotta work on that. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, so wait, good. where? So take us back. Where'd you? So your what? Your first? Your wife? The lady you're divorced from now? What? My wife. You, well, your my, yeah, your my, my wife. wife. Oh, I gotta get a, man, I gotta get a my wife on here. I can't believe I didn't. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. The N word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so wait, so how did you meet that lady? When did you uh, meet her? How did you meet her? I met her uh, after I moved here to South Carolina in 2005 after I got out of the army. She was a friend of the family. And then we dated once for about a year, broke up for three and a half years, got back together, and they got married. And we were married for all in all 13 years but really together for 12 and separated and then divorced and yeah bro you start you start writing country music uh no so wait wait a couple songs i guess we gotta go we gotta go back even further so wait you did you you enlisted in the army right out of high school correct two weeks out of high school i was in basic training yeah you definitely were not you're not a rich kid then there's no 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 rich kids that go in the army no absolutely But I, my my dad's side of the family was all in the military. Some of my mom's side was in the military, and they were really religious. So I signed up to be a chaplain's assistant. How many uh, how many CKs did you rack up? Um, zero. You don't have to answer that, bro. You do not have to. <laughs> He's a, cha- a ch- I don't think a chaplain's assistant is racking up confirmed, confirmed kills. kills. <laughs> no, no, no. Co- maybe confirmed, confirmed boards. More or less than Chris Kyle. Just put yeah. let's put it. The, uh, yeah. uh, what's the only Chris under? Kyle? Wait a second. So wait, what is that in the military? What does that what does that job entail? A chaplain's assistant? Like you just go you go to Afghanistan and pray? Well, essentially in garrison, you're like essentially his secretary. You set up meetings and stuff, and like the religious services that happen on the weekends. You and the other chaplain's assistants work together. You set up the services. The chaplain comes in, does the service, and then when he leaves, we break everything down. And then when we when we got deployed. He's not allowed to carry a weapon, so he drove me around, and I was just pretty much on point, keeping out up for him while he drove all throughout Iraq. He's not allowed, or he just doesn't like to? No, it's a violation of the Geneva Convention for a chaplain to hold a weapon, or to be okay. issued a weapon. Wait, it's a it's a violation of the Geneva Convention for a, a man of God to be, kick? They can't be issued a weapon. We're not saying they can't have a weapon. But so wait, I guess for one. the U.S. Army to give them that job, they're not going to give them a weapon. Correct. So that's why there's a chaplain assistant who protects them. So you, as the assistant, so you're like the, um, like in Game of Thrones, you're like the hound. You're more like uh, Denzel uh, and Man on Fire. Uh, yes. Or sure. <laughs> no, so it's like, like so. There's a clergyman, and then you're like the uh, the armed guard. Correct for the for the clergyman. Okay, so so this and so you this is overseas. Like there's yes. you, you go overseas and they do church services for the troops. Mm-hmm. Yep. Is it just Christianity or do they have like Muslim? Yeah, it all depends on what chaplain they have assigned to that company or battalion or whatever unit you're in, and then they'll they'll adjust for whatever religious services they need over there. They're, all the chaplains will. There's a network of chaplains, chaplain assistants. So if they need a Christian service, they'll get a Christian chaplain over there. If they have the Muslim chaplain, if they have the Catholic chaplain, they'll they'll acquiesce to the services that are needed. Word alert. <laughs> acquiesce. Never even fucking heard that one. You've never heard the word acquiesce? <laughs> there's some I don't. I've heard, but I don't know. And there's, there's some I can tell you that's never been said to You've me. You've never seen Pirates of the Caribbean? I think it's in Pirates of the Caribbean. No. Dude, I think my my power might go out any second. <laughs> this storm is the storm might kill me. There's a, there's at? such a heavy storm right now. <laughs> Damn, I got the well, I got the alert. I thought it was an amber alert. I was like, oh, it's another kid that's gonna get molested. You know, whatever. Well, if you go out, is like is Sal safe? It Sal's yeah. fine. Yeah, Sal's in a okay. different area. But now we're I, all set, dude. I got fucking notes for days. We can go to fucking food talk. We'll be set for the rest of the night, baby. I'm yeah. Fine. Well, I, I think well because I'm hosting it. Might the whole thing might crash. We'll just, we'll okay. just keep going. We'll just keep going. 
because this, right. this is interesting so okay. you when you're when you're a, uh so wait when you're a chaplain when you're working the the religious uh side of the military you don't necessarily see any action you're just on base well i mean they'll go out in in the field and they'll perform religious services they'll like whoever else is deployed they'll go to wherever everyone is stationed at like okay they'll, they'll move around they don't just stay in one spot mm -hmm. they'll get out there but they're not fighting listen he, he's saving souls okay yeah no i it's admirable i'm i'm just i've never i guess i never considered that i mean it makes sense i just didn't consider the um that there were clergymen in the military that that was like an actual job but i you know i guess it, it makes sense because i mean you know you're gonna be you're scared over there you that's when you're talking to god the most probably is when you're uh yeah. fighting the uh the, the moose lambs or, or whatever the, the, the american christian god the per, the one true god so yeah the one true the god crazy, he, sorry the crazy thing is that they're also doing the same thing he's like hold on i got another call and they're just talking in iraqi <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, you guys are definitely the, the people that are going to win. So, what do you what do you have to what do you have to score on the ASVAB to be able to become a um, chaplain's assistant? I got a GT score of one hundred and eight. I think my ASVABs were like sixty one or sixty two. Like I, I was girl with a little more ASVAB. What my scores were like, I was like when I went in there, like you can have whatever job you want, but I already knew I was going to do that, so I was like, they're like, all right, Seriously? yeah. The ASVAB is not a difficult test, Sal. You would probably do really bad on it. Yeah, but. Mm -hmm. It's it's actually a pretty easy exam from what I hear. I also wouldn't be issued a weapon. <laughs> they, yeah, you you would have been deemed too invalid to be issued a weapon. Yeah, though you can sweep up, but that does, job does not require a gun. Yeah, <laughs> there's so plenty you, of boys there with guns. You'll be fine. Yeah, so you you know going in you're gonna be a chaplain, but you you still have to go through basics. So like you're going through yeah. basic training and the whole time, mm -hmm. you're like man, I just can't wait to read my Bible. Um. <laughs> I, I was just happy to get out of Maine, so I didn't give a shit what I did. Oh, you so you 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 grew up in Maine, correct? Okay, and where did you go to basic? Uh, Fort Benning, Georgia. Fort Bang. Fort Benning. Oh, Fort Benning. Correct. <laughs> Come on, yeah. I've been I've been to Fort Benning. My dad my dad was in the army, so when I was nice. real little, we used to go to Fort Benning. Yeah. Go go shopping at the PX because it was yeah deep. PX it's yeah tax best. free no taxes yeah, on your groceries it's the best. <laughs> um so wait how so how long how long did you do that uh basic training is uh nine weeks so you go through that and then after basic training you go to ait which is you go to wherever your it's called it stands for advanced individual training so wherever your specific job is throughout the nation yeah. you go there and my job was at fort jackson south carolina for that was at USAC's united states army chaplain center in school then they train the chaplains there and the chaplain's assistants no, uh, no can i ask about basic what about it go ahead was it tough was it hard <laughs> no i had fun <laughs> did they let you take breaks yeah once in a while okay i had a good time i, I think if, yeah i think if you're in somewhat decent shape it's probably not that bad it would be a nightmare for me and sal dude i yeah, would i would not, pull the instructor like, aside and would, be like listen like, they're, they're getting pretty <laughs> desperate they'll take you guys now they would take us and then we would get there and it would be, it, you know, we'd just be like, oh, we made a huge mistake. Like there was no, probably... you should be on special population PT. They would just give you extra PT. <laughs> they're desperate to the point where they're like, we're going to change the uh, yeah. exercise regiment today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the yeah. reserve, the national guard, those, those guys are some big boys. There's some, there's some big motherfuckers. There's some have... fat fucking people yeah. in the military and on, on like police forces now. Like you ever see yes. a, 400 pound cop and you're like yeah. what use could you possibly be who are you stopping yeah exactly like you you have no choice but to just shoot anyone because you can't yeah. chase anybody but their arms are so fast it's not like they can hold a gun right like they, yeah they dude fat people holding a gun looks yeah. it's like, adorable it's yeah. adorable it's so cute yeah it's it's really insulting to see a, <laughs> a fat fucking cop like that but yeah I mean, you know, it's a job that pays like forty five thousand dollars a year. So who's taking that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I like to hold my gun sideways. Well, that's a that's a good way to not uh, hit your target. It's a birthday, you can do whatever you want, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's your weapon. Oh uh, yeah, not gonna yeah. hit anything. You don't think so? Sideways? No, I, no chance. There's no Damn, way. Why do they that, be doing that, that though? Because they're stupid. Cool. It just looks cool. It does look really. Yeah, fucking Sal, you're talking. You're talking about black people. Not gonna hit a goddamn thing. 
Yeah, you're talking about black people. It's like, why do they do anything they do? Because yeah. cool. Because an older, wiser black person told them who was there's not. No such thing, there's though. no such thing as a wise like... black person. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> there's a few out there. Um. <clears throat> So wait, so how long how long were you in the military? I did four years. Four years? Oh, like college. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Then I knew like I once I got out, I knew I was gonna move to South Carolina. So I did my four years, did a year in Iraq, and then moved here in 2005 and just got got fucking working. I had to get started. Nice. And so that's and so that you got out and then you met this bitch. <laughs> so, you, uh, yeah. how was your yeah. adjustment though? Because they don't hire armed guards in a lot of churches now. Um, I, um, my, got to live in a camper trailer in the backyard of my grandparents' house when I first got here. And I went, (laughs) sure. I mean, um, yeah. I went to a Bible study and a guy was like, Hey, I need somebody to work in my furniture store. Like you can come throw some furniture around. I was like, all right. So uh, for a few, first few years, I was working at a baby furniture store, just slinging furniture, moving shit around, putting shit together, taking it apart. So yeah. Knowing the whole time. Like if a war goes down, you're like, I'm fucking trained and ready, dude. Like these people don't even understand. Oh, no, no. When I was out, I was fucking out. I will never eat another MRE. I'll never wear camouflage. I don't wear a fucking goddamn thing that says I used to be in the military at all. I use my VA loans, but like you'll never see me wear anything. Really? That's cool. I mean, that's not a bad thing. I like I love it. No, like, not at all. Family, but like when I'm when I'm done with the shit, I'm fucking done with the shit. And like I, that's that chapter. I have respect for that. Yeah. So wait, you're see a lot of guys. Wait. It becomes their whole personality. Yeah. Some people really. It's like like some people look like college or peaking in mm-hmm. high school. They peaked in the army. They peaked in college. They peaked in high school. So they all. Yeah. What's on the menu, Sal? I'm having a. I just ordered a salad. Jesus oh, yeah. Christ. Like, dude, I got fucking. I got beef jerky. I got oh, cookies. Nice. So well, every, everybody, go ahead and chow down. I guess it's a powerful mm. salad. <laughs> What's on it? Oh man, we started with spinach. And there then we go. did, uh, I put three hard boiled eggs in this, bacon oh, crumbles. Fuck. No, no, we're done. Blue cheese crumbles. Um, What's up, y'all? Did I already say bacon? I, I, you know what's I happening? It. It's about to be that time. Put some, some sunflower seeds, some cranberries, okay. and blue cheese. Okay, I like that. Do you like, do you like um, craisins? Yeah. Cra- craisins are good. I like craisins. They're, they're, very, like ta- they're very tangy. <laughs> yeah. I knew a lady that swore she invented the term for craisins. She was on some fucking raisins tour and they were talking about this, you know, cranberry raisin. She's like, oh, those are like crazy raisins. And then she swears that she fucking patented that That's not how, that's not the good like, they stole my fucking idea. Yeah, I think a a It's not crazy raisins. It's not crazy cranberries. It's just raisins, (laughs) cranberry, raisin, crazy. Yeah, I mean, we were just like, okay. It doesn't make any sense etymologically. Because a craisin, the thing, it was crazy. She's a dumb bitch. Yeah, yeah. A craisin is a oh, yeah. like a dried cranberry. It's not a crazy right. raisin. There's no, there's no grape. There's no raisin anyway. It's it's a, it's not a crazy raisin. Unless you, unless I guess, unless you think cranberries are just crazy, then I she guess swear that, somebody heard her say that, and then ever since then they've been calling them craisins. Because I mean, That's does a awesome. does a raisin have to have been a grape, or could it yes. be like? Like, you know how, like, you know, like, the word pickle, it, like, you can pickle a lot of things. Yeah, but you can pickle, yeah. You can pickle these nuts. Yeah, you can I pickle just, these nuts. But, you know, like, go. you can pickle a lot of things, but, like, the word Correct. pickle itself is kind of synonymous with cucumbers. Yeah. But there's, like, pickled garlic, pickled beets, like, you can pickle, so pickle refers to, like, the process. The process. So, it's, like, raisining the same way where. Uh, that's like, dehydrating. Yeah, so I guess I guess a craisin could be a crazy raisin if the the word raisin is referring to the process by which the food is prepared. Perhaps you know, maybe I did not expect um, color. that we it's were an gonna orange take... cranberry, a blue cranberry, a white cranberry. Oh, no, white cranberries exist. Yeah, yeah, like if you if you have a dehydrated like apricot, that's like a crappercot. Yeah, a yeah, cra- a, a a craisin, a crazy yeah, banana. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dehydrated apples, crapple. We got this. Yeah. I'm not really yeah, into the dehydrated fruit so much. I'm not a big fan either. I, you know, every now and then, not all of them. I'll, every craisins now and then, I'll have craisins. a bowl. Of, I like, I like craisins. 
craisins are good, and every now and then I'll have a bowl of Special K where it's got the uh, the strawberries mm-hmm. in it. Yeah, those are they, all right. Yeah, but yeah, that, it's only once the milk hits them and they like rehydrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta you gotta rejuvenate them. But yeah, yeah. like de- dehydrated fruit is seems really stupid. It's always seems mm-hmm. dumb to me because you're like mm-hmm. you're just it's like getting, a marshmallow, like yeah, a fruit marshmallow. The you're texture, getting all the you. sugar of the fruit, and I think like none of the nutrition. <laughs> yeah. Your seeds um, and sugar. Yeah. Like if in I I guess like of the dehydrated fruits there out there, I always I guess mango was always the good one for me, but they're all right. It's like I'd rather just eat mangoes, just like regular. Yeah, mangoes I had some mango today. With some ta- right. like tahine on it, dude. Put a little tahine on that bitch. What is tahine? It's like a chili lime um seasoning. It's um it's some Mexican bullshit. It's some Mexican <laughs> bullshit. It's really good. It goes really good on a lot of different fruits. People be putting food. spices on their fruits. It's it's trashy. And it doesn't I mean, look it's not it's trashy. It's, it's, a tra- it's like beer salt, dude. It's a trashy move. It's I never not I don't... trashy. My stepdad did that shit. He or like salt. bringing your own popcorn salt to the movies. It's fucking trashy. That's no, that's a different you thing. Live in a dumpster. Put, putting tahini on fruit. Holster. Is that trashy? Wait, what? Tabasco holster? It, Tabasco holster? No, that's just convenience, right yeah, there. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's just a smart move. Or the no, Red Sox. Sal, like you, the Sal, you are not the arbiter of trashiness. Like you don't get to be the the guy who makes uh, calls out what's trashy and what's not. There's Why, nothing. Tra- I... There's nothing trashy about tahini. It's just a it's a lovely Hispanic seasoning that goes good on fruits and rice and yeah, seasoning your fruit is like uh, fruit's good enough as it is. Come on, man. Go ahead. Know. What are you gonna? What are you? What are you gonna naysay seasoning fruit? It's good. It hey, it's good on fruit. It okay. So here's the thing about sweet and savory is the 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 contrast in those flavors elevate each of them. This feels insulting to fruit. I just I like fruit enough as it is. Fruit is good by itself, but sometimes <laughs> if you if you put a little bit of a mix a little bit of savory with your fruit, it brings out. It like heightens the flavor of the fruit. Like pineapple on pizza. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, like okay, fair. I do like pineapple on pizza. It is yeah. Good. So hold hold on, Sal. Uh, the N word. But your uh, kill shot. You're dead. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I got some soundboard. Yeah. Oh. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> you need to put the Peter laugh on here, or or Robbie doing the Peter laugh. I gotta get a Peter laugh. Yeah, I've got the oh good. Sal Sal will like this one. Medici. Medici. Yes. <laughs> I've got the I've got the full thing. For when Robbie. Medici. What can I smell, yo, dick? Put that shit um, on there. Yeah, so fruit fruit is good. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, how did we get on the how we get on uh, the, the shit? Who gives the shit? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I okay. oh I have I have big news. So I got hooked up with a uh a peacock subscription. All right. And uh you know Peacock? Um I don't have any subscription services, but I'm I'm aware of it. Oh, do you have a TV? Yes. I got the game on right now. <laughs> oh nice. Cool. Uh <laughs> Rangers? There's uh, a Bucks Pacers game. Oh. Oh yeah. Peacock Sal, please please cool it on the salad. <laughs> cool it. Uh hold on. Wait a second. Um <laughs> All right. Gay. <laughs> I love a, I love a podcast where everyone eats, but they enhance the mouth sounds. They quiet the talking and the mouth sounds get louder. Oh, dude, it's, it's, it's dry. The, the mouth sounds drive me crazy. Yeah. Just the darkness wailing and gnashing of teeth at the end of the fucking podcast. Um, what's another one I have? I guess this is not this is not really how a radio DJ uses a soundboard. It's just going. No, oh, not, let's see what I got on here. Side kid honest. plays with one. Hold on, yeah, this is this is how I just play with it. Uh, hey. Hold on one sec. I got another one. Uh... Oh, wait, boy. Zaza. <laughs> Zaza. <laughs> Yo. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's one of my favorite videos on the That's planet. That's so good. Zaza. What is it? We used to say that, bro. 
so I got a um yeah I got a Peacock subscription because I saw I was I was scrolling through TikTok and I saw a clip and I've I've known that this show has existed I've just, I haven't watched any of it yet but I saw a clip from this Chucky TV show All right and I was like yo this shit looks awesome <laughs> I gotta check I gotta watch this because I uh, those were all I always enjoy, I've always enjoyed those movies and uh, I've seen every one of them. That first Except, one, fuck, I don't think I've ever seen a yeah. single one. You've that never seen one. a single Chucky movie, dude. They are so good. It's, are they really? They're so fucking good, dude. They were like small soldiers. When was kid. Wasn't that first one like eighty eight? Child's Play was yeah the eighties, like eighty yeah. eighty eight. I think I saw and, that when I was five. That scared the fucking shit out of me. Yeah, it's it's perfect because it's when you're a kid, it's fucking terrifying. Yeah, I was scared and, of that shit for a long time. And then and then like when you when you grow up, when you become an adult, you realize how fucking funny all yeah, of those like, movies oh, are. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. I can watch them as an adult. As a kid, I used to be really afraid of it. Dude, they're yeah. so the the like they're great. The kills, the scares are great, but the comedy is like yeah. r- really good. Like Brad Dorif, his voice acting, his performances in all of them. Yeah, is it's like I I, I like I don't know like how where where people rank Chucky on their horror villains list or whatever. He's got to be the best. Just, Chucky versus he's got Jason. A personality in those, some of the others. He, he's got, yeah, he's got like Brad Dorif has such a great personality. He he delivers. He's so expressive in the way he does that, like the voice acting for that character. Yeah, and I and it, and I have it. There's no other horror franchise that has been as consistent. It's so funny because like the guy that created Child's Play, Don Mancini. That's all he's ever done. He's like, it's like a labor of love for him. This like passion he has for this killer doll franchise that he's like, he's fleshed it out now where there's, there's like deep lore and mythology for it now. Works. Shit. Yeah. Cause I start the, I start watching the, uh, I got peacocks. I I watched the first couple episodes of the show. It's awesome. It's gory. It's gory. It's just that because okay, so there was a the last movie before the show was called Cult of Chucky, and it was um the it was like a mental asylum, and ch- somehow Chucky had like split himself into a bunch of a bunch of Chucky dolls, and so they were going into this asylum because Andy Barclay was there, and uh, I can't even remember. It was just it, the premise was that it was a bunch of fucking Chucky dolls. Were they like and, different aspects of his personality? Uh yeah, the each the, yeah they were all like maximum uh, carnage. Yes, and one of the ch- and and then there was like a Chucky that had possessed this lady, and the actress that plays the lady is actually Fiona Dorif, who's Brad Dorif's daughter in real life. The Brad Dorif, the voice of Chucky. I can't really remember the movie that well, but the show picks up after that, so it's like. Some some fucking gay kid in the town where Chucky is from, the actual Charles Lee Ray character, finds the doll at like a yard sale and he buys it. And then, you know, as we've seen in many of these movies, uh How's the doll keep being put back together? It sounds um, like Jumanji. It voodoo. It's honestly the answer is voodoo. Okay. <laughs> it's voodoo. Makes sense. I mean, that's uh, where you started. Yeah. So. Ch- Chucky, Charles Lee Ray is a devotee of the voodoo god Dumbala. <clears throat> and so that's how he's able to keep coming back is uh through the power of voodoo it works it's great it's a good show i'm very happy i got p pe- i got the hook up on the peacock um because nothing you know nothing makes me happy anymore there's nothing good anymore michael what do you, you like do you're watching basketball do you watch anything not really i got my youtube subscriptions i watch those i play i play sports i run i lift weights i go to the y like I'm very physically active. I cook. You fuck chicks. Yes, yes, I do. Nice. Oh, nice. Beautiful naked, big titted women just don't fall out of the sky, you know. I guess that works. <laughs> they don't. I'm up to, <laughs> since the separation, I'm in the 40s now, but I think I'm done. You're in your 40s? No, he's no. had sex with 40 different women. Both. Over. Both. Dude, you look fucking good. <laughs> you 41. <laughs> Dude, you look wow. really good. Thanks. I, I would I not have like guessed you're in your 40s. You see your eyes. Yeah, it's all in your eyes. What's in my no, eyes? No, no, you don't. <laughs> he, he does not look 40. No, yeah, you don't. Thanks, man. Yeah. I don't drink. I don't. 
I don't like drinking anymore. So I haven't really drank on a regular basis since, since the army. And then I just smoke weed and that's about it. So. Yeah, I guess because like everybody's starting to look like shit again. I don't take like, any medications either. Yeah, because there there was like back in the day, like if you watch if you watch any TV or movies from like the sixties and seventies, people in their like early to mid thirties look like fucking dog shit. Yeah, like yeah, they looked dude. old they were, like, shit. Living hard. <clears throat> yeah, and then, every day they were smoking unfiltered every day. Man, yeah. we really did just split off into and then, a different reality. Well, then, well, then after that, they took the lead out of the gasoline. They got rid of all the asbestos. People the started, fire. yeah, pe- people started to ease up on the smoke and the boozing. And mm-hmm. then it, it seemed like there there was like a long stretch where people were achieving like longer youthfulness and longevity, where it's like people in their thirties looked you know young really young I feel like that's now still now it seems like everybody's starting to look like shit again yeah, there's and a lot of people who are like in their 30s they say like well i'm in my 30s now like life is over i'm like motherfucker you're in your 30s life isn't over you're not i old. dude i thank you for saying dude i have seen that Thanks. so much now dude it's like people are not, people are starting to regress where they're like aging like dog shit they look like shit and they're resigning themselves to like this uh like feudal mind, futile mind yeah. where they're like, they're well, I'm 30. They yeah, they're, they're like, I'm 30, so I got to go to bed at 7.30, my joints hurt, and, uh, every you know, my life is just, it's over now. And, I, dude, I remember when, because my dad was military, and he was, he was, like, hardcore about, like, fitness for a long time, and he got, it was in his late 30s when he got in probably the best shape he's ever been in. What was he hardcore about? fitness these nuts fitness nuts in your mouth thank you yeah. but he he got in like good ass shape in his like late 30s and then because he's a psycho re-enlisted in the military in his 40s in my sophomore year of high school went to afghanistan That's <laughs> he was in his like mid 40s and he was like yeah you know i'm doing i'm gonna go do six months in afghanistan for uh bagram air base he must have hated That's you guys he just loved so, like Bro. dude he's he's the kind of guy and michael you might you might know what i'm talking about like there's so many just so many like youtube videos of like just military footage is he all about duty it's, he loves duty yeah he loves duty yeah he loves duty thank you that's um, about the duty yeah no, a lot of people are all about their duty but you know dizzy, what I mean? yeah. but, dizzy. <laughs> but there's all the you, you've probably seen these youtube videos where it's like military footage and it's uh played under the um like uh, a drowning pool uh, oh yeah, yeah. Used that for, so in field artillery they would show like the the new people the new recruits to our field artillery battalion we had this whole montage of our big gun shooting two drowning pools let the bodies yes. The yes. you guns. know exactly what i'm talking about yes, dude, absolutely yes dude, it's, meant, it's built to get your dick hard it works it's, it, fucking, it, it's cool as fuck it worked on my dad in his 40s yes. Yes. he just was getting drunk <laughs> And watching YouTube videos of like military montage footage to the drowning pool zone. Down. Dude, <laughs> yeah. you gotta understand once your dad's at that point, he's in his 40s, he's got kids, he's got a wife. Most men don't have that out to be like, I yeah. gotta go, honey, I gotta go to Iraq. I gotta go. I mean, it's my duty. One more shot at living. Yeah. And it's like, he must have been so fed up with you motherfuckers that he no, was like, I'm, I'm gonna go back into the war. That that year, that time overseas was probably the best of his twilight. Guarantee you, he yeah. He thinks about those days all the fucking. He's currently time. thinking about that he, right now. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I think jerking off in a wood. He's thinking about you. Burn the shit. I think it's talking to my dad, it seems like he really has a fondness for when he first joined the military in the eighties and got stationed in like Seoul. South Korea oh, yeah. and like yeah, and oh, yeah females Korea, over there. awesome. Like the closer you are to the DMZ, it sucks. But the further you are, like the farther south, that's easier going. It's like apparently that shit rules. Yeah, he he always speaks fondly of like the hookers in South Korea and the the, yeah. the, the ladies. So he was hoping hookers. he's like, I don't know, maybe there's hookers in Afghanistan. I don't know. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. I I think because he I think it. it was his last good memory because when he got home from that deployment, his wife at the time. He found out had uh, had cheated on him because she was uh, pregnant. She was too pregnant. She was like too, more pregnant than she should have been. Yeah, he just <clears> did the math. Oh, yeah, I saw yeah, a lot so, of that shit. Yeah, so she gave birth <laughs> to a, a Mexican baby, and my dad was like, "Well, he ain't neither one of us Mexican, so." 
<laughs> well, honey, let's think about this. Yeah. It's called um, Joe. Yeah. So that um, sucks. So you almost had a stepbrother. Dude, that happens all the fucking time. Oh yeah. Uh, a lot of a lot of them dumb motherfuckers got married right before they got deployed. Gave all their power of attorney to the wife they just married and knew three months, went overseas, came back with nothing in their fucking bank account. Why would they cheat? Those though? dumb cons bled them dry. Why do they cheat? Why? The women? Yeah. Uh, because... because they can, stupid. Yeah, you're t- so you're talking about women. I mean, why do they do anything they yes. do? I don't know. It just seems like you and know, the like you got a good man. No, their husbands are overseas. They can't do shit about it. And those bitches get bored. women get bored real fucking fast. Yeah, they get bored, and they don't. You know, it's not like Sparta where it's like yeah. some uh, noble lady who's like, "You come back on your shield." No. You know, it's, it's just, when you're in the military is one of the worst fucking ideas you could. Mm, hell yeah, no. it's it's some no dumb fucking, fucking corn fed southern bitch who's like, well, it's been two months since I've been dicked down, so I guess I need to go uh, go yeah. to the bar and find somebody to fucking mix my guts up. Or some local it, chick who's in a military town outside of the base who you do not want to be fucking breeding with. Why? Because they they wait for all the. Dude, right. any any military town? Like, I was stationed in Texas. You guys are in Texas. So I did about three years in Texas, not too far away from you guys, at Fort Hood. It's not called Fort Hood now. It's called something else. It's called Fort Clit. I think it's like Fort Singleton or something. Some really gay name. I don't know why like, they guess, changed it. All the all the shootings, I think. If they, oh, if they can't have, You can't have shootings at Fort Hood if it's not called Fort Hood. Yo, I heard that's the hood, though, for real. Hell yeah, that's it. <laughs> but I was, there, I was there before all the shootings, but like Colleen, the town around the Fort Hood, like you can get anything you want, good or bad. And that's, it's, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. But so, was hate. there any outlet for uh, sex in the Middle East other uh, than not with each me. other? Not for me. I knew one guy who got laid. One Lord guy, who got oh, like from a local? Or no, the ladies over there aren't fucking. <laughs> No, he was a medic. R.I.P. to Perales. <laughs> Rest in peace, good man. He was the only one I knew that got laid the first time we went over. He was like working with another another like female medic. So oh, okay, good. Like well, I was in an all male battalion anyway. There's no fucking women around at all. So the odds of it happening was not happening. <laughs> Gay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of that shit. Oh, was there a lot of gay shit happening? Well, not a lot of gay shit, but like just no fucking chicks around. But I was at Fort Benning was an all male, all dudes as well. So what are you gonna do? Yeah. yeah, they got a lot of broads in the military now. Yeah, I did work with like there's a lot of chaplains this that were women, so I did have some interaction with them, but not a, not a ton. But. Oh well, the chaplains they get no ass because there's no kids in the army. No, a lot of the chaplains were married. Jesus Christ, so <laughs> come on, man. Yeah. Certain ones were single. Like one of my my yeah, last everyone's one. over eighteen. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, but does he uh, <laughs> <laughs> all up on the sofa yeah <laughs> so, Sal, like, I gotta ask you a question Sal like how did you get to the, you're from New York right yeah how did you get to Texas what brought you to Texas? no shit come on Sal it. come on and boy are my arms tired <laughs> Bro, because I had graduated high school and uh, I wanted to leave where I was. That's it didn't exactly matter. I could have been living in, in, in Disney. I was like, I got to get out of here. That's what I did like, immediately. Yeah. I was like, they're like, it's safe. It was nice to be raised up there, but like, they weren't, it just wasn't for me. I had yeah. to and the, where I live now in like North Texas is, I think, one of the greatest places in the country to live. There you go. Very nice. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. North Texas is nice. It's really nice. I'm with the mean green. Hell yeah. 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 New York it's, is cool. Uh, what part of New York? Like northern, like I was up, I was upstate. The city, like like Oanada, Syracuse. Uh, yeah, Look, it's Finger like, Lakes. Yeah, yeah. I actually lived on one of the Finger Lakes. Nice. I lived oh. on Canisius. Did it stink? Ah, uh, no, Canisius. Is Canisius, cool. get your ass inside. Cuca, Cuca is the one that stinks. Yeah, Canisius, stunk? get your ass which, inside. Which are the fingers? Which are the fingers? Were you? It was a little one. It was like little one. Little one. So, like, it smells like boogers or something like that. You can get that up there. Mm, smell them finger likes. <laughs> um, There's probably, like, I remember sage the for, like, first boring. time going down on a woman. I was staring her right in the pussy thinking, oh, my God, where do I even begin? 
Yeah, I think that every time, and I've done it a bunch. <laughs> and every time I think that, where do I start? Just close your eyes. And just How do you, yeah, just let yeah, your nose guys. Just you. close your yeah. eyes and, and try to think of oh, something yes. else. It'll be over soon. No, no, it's fun. But if you, oh, I love eating ass and pussy. Yeah, if, yeah like I've done, I've, that's the first time I ate ass was after I became single. Like, it was like, yeah. <laughs> gay. <laughs> like, I mean, it was, it was clean. It just, just organically just. I got eat ass from the back. Awesome. Oh yeah, I did. It was it was fantastic. Insane. Not do. not all of them, not all of them are worthy of it. There's no, but no, uh, no. it's definitely fun. Disgusting. Yeah, if, they, if, they, if they prepared and they're like they're pretty enough, like you don't. Well, what? On how pretty they are. Yeah, next to like, I don't know, like food. Like, what is better than a hot woman? Um, nothing. Um, a hot man. A hot Some man would probably be third. So the love of a child, <laughs> the love of a child. So it's like, wouldn't you want to get your, your mouth child, all over? Somebody else's child. Yeah, yeah, the love of a child, not not in a sexual. Not a stepchild. Not a stepchild. I feel the love They're of cool. a precious cool. child. Yeah, not not in any sort of sexual way. Um, nah. What else do we got here? Hold on, bro. You look just like a guy. I uh, my uh, that roommate. Time. I always my that roommate time. in rehab actually. I get that a lot. Um, we used to call each other cellmates. He'd be like, "What up, Selly?" I got such a fucking generic name. Yeah, you yeah, know it's his name was Noah. So yeah, you you some Peckerwood ass uh, white boy, some mayonnaise ass uh, honky. You definitely the look like the kind of guy that gets pulled over and given a warning. Yeah, I, that happens. You got a lot of warnings. Oh, dude, you have yeah, you have a police ass haircut for sure. Now right? skedaddle, get out of here before I get mad. Point. They apologize and let me go. Yeah, I've 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 only <laughs> most of my interactions with the police have been warnings. I've only ever gotten a ticket one time. Dude, and it was because I, I was going like thirty miles over the speed limit. Just own it. Like anytime I got pulled over speeding, I was like, "Yes, sir. No, sir. I did it. I'm sorry." Just I like I'm not a fan of cops. Just even as a child, there's something instinctively in me like just stay away from. Them. Just if you're near cops, like you're doing something wrong. Don't what do y'all do when them. they uh when they approach the vehicle? Just, just own it. Just yes, sir, no, sir. Put your hands up. Just do exactly what they're. I always put my hands on the. Uh, Give them everything the they wheel. want. Just own. I just admit it. Yes, I. That was totally my fault. No excuse. Give yeah. everything. Just get the fuck out of here. Like, and I, I always I, wondered. Officer, I'm white. Out. Officer, I'm white. Yeah. Tell them everything they want to hear, and you'll fucking get out of there as fast as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I saw them. I, they went that way. Two black guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I. Anytime I've gotten caught, like busted by the police, uh, like got in trouble. <laughs> it's it's always just like yeah i'm just i'm just i just tell them like they're like do you know why i'm stopping you or why i pulled you over whatever the case may be and i just go oh yeah for sure i like i know what i'm doing wrong here's what i'm doing wrong people that do that that like want to like show their rights and stuff where they don't want to roll the window down they don't want to give their name i'm like how how do you have the fucking stomach for that anytime i've even like, seen a cop dude it's crazy dude those vi- yeah those videos of where it's it's like a black guy who's filming it and he's like uh-huh. i am not resisting i'm not doing anything wrong it's like i would be like you're you doing are you making this worse let's get out of yeah. here it's a yeah. traffic stop so you got to like you know have some I'd be terrified yeah it's you are I dude like that that shit seems like such bait to me like when you see those videos because it's like you are intentionally t- escalating this so oh, that yeah. it becomes like a thing that you've you been post. out of here by now. Tell them what they wanted to hear yeah like I don't know I, like I'm not black I know the black people have a complex you know their relationship with the police is complicated you know, dicey I guess the, the love hate relationship yeah but I, when I see shit like that where where they are because like even if even if the cop's a dickhead even if he's on a power trip it's like just fucking let him toss you around and settle it later yeah it's crazy those those situations where it's like i'm gonna prove that he that i'm gonna let him rough you up and get paid later on yeah exactly it's like you're gonna get fucking killed if you try to like or just prove anything or just the ones where they're rude right off the bat. Like, I want your name and badge number. I ain't talking to you. It's like, bro, Unless how far you do you think you're going to get like that? You get their gun right off the bat. Then you can say whatever you want. Like, like you think that's going to be, like, good? you know, I just don't get Dude, it. Dude, when, when I was insane, I mean, that was my move with the NYPD officers that I um, harassed. Did you go to, like, name and badge number? Helping them? Did you go run away from them or did you go to them? Like, I was going to them to uh, tell them, my, like, weird conspiracy theories. 
like these delusions I was having, and I was like, "Cops, I need your help!" Cops. And I would just start. I would just start telling them like, uh, <laughs> like whatever I was believing at that time. Like, there's so, something is amiss, and they'd go like, like keep life's moving, an RPG. Kid. Yeah, it, it was. It was like, like you can I hand them like, a quest. Yeah, it's like I was playing Dude, Final Fantasy. Seven. I was playing Final Fantasy, and I was trying to talk to an NPC, and they kept going scram, and I'd be like, "No, wait!" And then they would turn back to me. <laughs> it's off in the dialogue. Yeah, <laughs> keep hitting yeah. X. There's gonna be some new shit eventually. You there, chicken chaser? Yeah, I haven't and... played any of the Final Fantasies. So are they good? Uh, so that was a Fable the, reference. Of Mine. the ones I've played, I played the first Fable. That one's fun. Yeah, of chicken the ones... chaser. So the. I guess the the most beloved Final Fantasy, a lot of people would say, is Final Fantasy Seven. It's a good really one. That one death, it y- yeah, seven which, and nine are very good. Yeah, and so it's. I guess if you want to, you can play the original seven if you want. Uh, that's the one I, one of the first ones I played, and I played it at a time in my life when I guess that was appropriate. Uh, they but now they're doing the set the remakes of seven, which are much more dynamic. Where it's instead yeah. of the like turn based combat system, and focus- I'm not like I'm not all for remaking movies, but remaking games is a great idea. They should if they're gonna actually if they're gonna actually now. do what they're doing with this one, where they're completely remaking it, where it's in a complete like totally new experience, then yes, this, this these cash grab things they do where they just like remaster it and make you buy it again and again and again that sucks yeah but, no you ever make a game that misses the mark just by a smidge like we do one thing just a tad better this game will fucking hit it i don't know why yeah. oh there's so many games well, like that bro the final fantasy 7 remakes are tight because they it's like a completely Daisy. new experience like it's they've changed they've completely changed how the game plays it, they, they're changing like the story is a little bit different it's like Conan. It's cool. I can name a million games like that. Yeah. So I mean, I would I would recommend just like playing that one, and, like get in on that seven, the seven remake because they're they split they're splitting it up into three parts and they just released the second. So those are those are cool and it's and it's definitely more fast paced. Like I when I was a kid, I was I had the focus and patience for just like turn based shit, just sitting there and going yeah do do like click and be like okay and, like, now he's gonna attack. Being in the middle of a battle, running downstairs, doing something like being gone from the game for like an hour, coming back and being like punch. Yeah. yeah. Now I it's... was a house child. I was a field child. Oh, Dude, yeah. my <laughs> <laughs> senator, I'm a house child. <laughs> Wait, do Dude, I? My a... brother one time clicked the power button on the Nintendo Whoa. when I was playing a game, and you know how you gotta uh, release it for it to actually shut off. Yeah. I was like, no. And he's like, so he just like held done. it with the black press. He just oh, had to fuck. hold it, dude. Like, what? Fucking, wait, what game was it? It was an out oh, Kirby got or something. He's button on the NES press in. So he just let's go. It's like having a grenade with, like, the pin. Yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was like, exactly holding it, doing. dude, sweating. <laughs> what a cunt. Uh, yeah, yeah Final, Final Fantasy's cool. Um, I, I, you I, might have a PS5. I don't no. have a PS5, no. I switched I, to PC. I haven't played a video game in a coon's age, to be honest with you. It's been it's been a while since I've played I played a gonna, video game. I was gonna ask, do you get down on Age of Empires? Uh no, I don't play any PC games. I mainly play like any Souls likes or sports games. Okay, now we're talking Souls, that was like that all was- the Souls likes, even the knockoffs by other companies. I've played like 20 Souls variants. Yeah, like when I was really into gaming, um I still had I still haven't played Sekiro or Elden Ring, but they're fantastic. I played, I was obsessed with all the Dark Souls games and played through those multiple times, like each one. I prefer and Dark Holes. The, I love Dark Holes. Um, uh, for sure. Oh, hold on. There's a subreddit I am subscribed to called Dark yeah. Bits and Pieces. Yeah, Dark. I love, I love hold on. Dark Holes. The yeah. N word. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I got those on there. Uh, yeah, I got really into those, and my favorite was Bloodborne. That was like, that was the best. Yeah, Bloodborne was really, really good. That I was awesome. All of them. My son yeah. beat Elden Ring before me, and he just talked shit the whole time. He dogged the fucking shit out of me because he beat it before me. What's Are it like having a son? a son? Yeah. So like, they can do stuff like, and like tell you about it. Yeah. Like my kids cool. are little, so I'm still oh, not really. My kids twelve. I got. Two three-year-olds that are twins, and I have a, a one and a half-year-old, well, one-year-old. What's your favorite? Uh, 
Well, I, when people ask me this, I say I put it like this: I only have one boy, so yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> I, I got I got one. I did it right the first time. I yeah, I only have one boy. Is that with your previous wife? Uh yes. Your and then ex? I raised four kids in the marriage. Like she had two from a previous marriage, and then at the, towards the end of the marriage, her brother died, and then we took in her her niece. And what? So towards the end. Yeah. How did he, he die? Uh, he accidentally killed himself by an autoerotic asphyxiation. No. What? Wait, what? He accidentally killed himself by an autoerotic asphyxiation. That, I've never heard of just a oh. regular guy doing that. Yeah, he had mommy issues and he was What was the what did his wife do? Um he was single. Oh, okay, thank God. Yeah, yeah. Like he like he not a bad guy, but like you ever meet people who like they have kids but like, oh you never should have had kids. Okay, well there we go. Yeah, his name is Sal Michael. <laughs> my excellent father I'm, I'm, I'm sure you and by are. that i mean i only yell at my kids 50 percent of the time i mean are they giving you a hard time i guarantee you they're so said, bad now i guarantee you've had like nine times where you said it calm and nobody mm-hmm. heard those all they hear is the one time you go motherfucker do this shit but exactly you eight fucking warnings before and nobody ever hears it. they only see yeah. you blow your top like you're a fucking asshole usually yeah. you can hear from me from across the house go son of a bitch yeah uh, <laughs> yeah, I I'm not. But this is I'm my not. this is an impression of my dad growing up. Animals, you're all animals. You don't see the version of my dad. <laughs> he's one. Oh, he's, he's gone. He, he oh, left. And he's back. He went out it's for a weekend. gallon of milk. It's the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> It's the weekend. Yeah. Oh, it's every other Wednesday. Oh. <laughs> no, we, didn't do the, we, didn't do, we didn't have the weekday, but it was, it was every other weekend. That yeah, sucked. I mean, same until I, when I moved to Texas, I moved with my dad. I had only yeah. done weekends with him. Was it like so, finally like being around him all the time? It was really cool. It was really nice. cool. I was, he's like, I was like, let's, let's get out of here. Let's get, let's get away from this bitch. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes I feel like I'm, you know, I'm too young to have kids, and I realize like, oh, I might it actually might be too late. How old no, you? you can have kids, and guys can have kids way later. Than That's true. Pacino just had a kid. kid. Yeah, bro, you don't have to do any of the incubation. Like, I have brother that's fifteen. Yeah, I just I have never been mature enough to even have a like a girlfriend. Nobody's ready when they have kids. I wasn't fucking ready. You just got to fucking deal with it when you have. Them. Yeah, like any any time I've had anything resembling maybe a relationship, I'm always. It's like, oh no, I'm I'm too much of a child to do this right now. Like I can't. Like I don't I don't have the maturity or the fortitude or any of any of like what is necessary to maintain a relationship. Oh, it's fucking yeah. hard. It's rough. I went from can't quit. That's a single guy to married with two kids. That's fucking. That's a big fucking jump. Those first yeah. couple of years were rough. Just <laughs> just that adapting from being single and doing what I want to. All right, there's a wife here with two children now that are six and eight. I'm like Jesus, that's that's a big fucking jump. That's not crawling and walking and running. That's getting up and fucking sprinting. It's insane. Yeah, but you at least have like the foundation of responsibility and duty because you were i mean you were in the military like i just i don't know i was, I was kind of an asshole in the army i really fucked around sure I but i mean i went to college you ever beat anybody like was there like was a that? guy y'all picked on you know like you beat him up um, in the middle of the there's night some guys, well anyone who got picked on was just a dickhead like they earned it there right. wasn't no like private piles that like no, really got it just people who fucked up like they were like you saw why they were getting picked on because they couldn't do anything right fuck i would hate that well, then don't fuck anything up and you won't get picked on. Oh, my God. I want to go home. Like, even if it's <laughs> <basic training, laughs> I feel, I already feel it. I'd be getting picked on. It's not on. that bad. It's really not. Like, I nobody... I think, because we, we had. Take it personal. We had a, like, we've had my high school buddy on here a couple of times. My buddy G.I. Chase. Oh, yeah, and, like, G.I. Talking Chase. to him. Talking to anybody that was in the military. Isn't uh, Dorkport? Like, isn't, wasn't he a veteran? Yeah, Drew Drew Flores was in the Air Force as yeah. well. Yeah, that's Dorkport. He got uh, a shout out Dorkport. Dork Dork shout great. Out to, shout out to Drew. But uh, Air Force, they had they had way much, way, way, way better shit. They always had the top of the line, the nicest shit. They call them the chair force for a reason. They always <laughs> had, it was spoiled. But I mean, like it does seem like talking to a lot of guys in the military, maybe not Drew as much, but like you or Chase or a lot of the guys I know in the military, 
it does seem like it it whipped him into some kind of shape. Mm -hmm. Like it got him. It took him from like whatever shit heel dickheads they were in high school, yeah. and turned them into actual men. Whereas I knew like, I needed a foot in my ass, and I needed like somebody else to do it. I wasn't gonna do it myself. Exa Man, yeah, exactly. Joined. Like it provides you like with a just a foundation, like guidance. Like it just. Yeah. I it's one good it's a good way it seems like to become an actual man whereas like me I went to college and just like we're gotten, still wondering got into a bunch of debt and then drank heavily for it took me six years to get my bachelor's so I just I drank a bunch <laughs> and um and then I just ended up also doing a bunch of like eventually discovered other drugs and then all that just ruined my life anyway. So sometimes I, you know, but none of that makes us men. Sometimes Sorry. I see the, I think about those old Navy commercials with the, um, with, with that. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, the accelerate your life commercials. And I do think like, man, man I, if I had done that, I might actually be a man by now. I, I saw Paul George in the army now and it changed my life. You saw in the, the army Shore now? Movie? I was like, I want to be just like Andy Dick. That's one of the better Pauly Shore movies. That's one what of the, the good. His early yeah. shit was actually funny. Like, dude, like, I'm so old. Like, he had a show called Totally Pauly on MTV. Like, early MTV, like the yeah. late, the early 90s, late 80s. That shit was phenomenal. They had some really good shit. Like, Totally, yeah, totally yeah. Pauly. And I was like six years old, like a six year old seeing Totally Pauly. That was the funniest thing I'd ever dude, seen. The in my past life. is like another dimension, honestly. We have nothing like that. Yeah, really. Now. Yeah, that's a good point. Beyond dude. Flux, the Max, the Everything head. sucks. Whoa, television. Liquid Television. Liquid Television was so fucking like, I have, my, I have an older sister who was five years older than me. So she was in charge of what we watched. So we just watched early 90s MTV, lots of Wilson Phillips. Lots of CNC Music Factory, MC Hammer, like all that shit, and like Liquid Television, The State. Watch that was I didn't. There's a lot of childhood stuff I missed, and it was just replaced with all. Dude, you had like the same, pop, like pop, like cultural upbringing as like. And the Simpsons. What, Simpsons. what would make like somebody like me, like a dipshit yeah. guy yeah, trying yeah. to be a comedian? Yeah, but you you just That's you why became I a. Podcast. Yeah, you became a man of God in the military, and I was like, no, I was gonna, a, I'm going to do no, open mics. I, I was not a man of God by any stretch. I protected people who were men of God. Uh, yes. God. Being cruel Dalton. to them would backdoor me into heaven. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, back Dalton, door. you're trying to tell me your father never encouraged you? to? He tried so hard, and I just oh, really? completely refused to ever... He was, that was he, probably dude, it. I, I was like, I grew up just a fat, lazy indoor kid. And he was constantly just like, "Son, will you please just go outside and like come throw the ball Anything. around and do yeah, something?" <laughs> yeah, he was like, "Just do something active." <laughs> and I was like, "No, I'm on the third disc of Final Fantasy VII. Now, are you I'm out of your fucking mind? Myself. You are Bobby Hill. Yeah, and you always, you always bust ass to make your kid's life better than what you had." I fucked up because, like, I'm really good at making a 12 year old boy room awesome. So, like, he never wants to leave his room, but that's my fault because I made it sick as fuck. He's got a mini fridge. He's got a 42 inch flat screen. He's got this gaming laptop right here. You're doing for him what you wish you had at 12. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like, no, nah, this rocks. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that seems like the best part of being a parent is just yeah. like, yo, check all this cool shit out that I'm going to yeah, do. That, for that is the best. Like, shit you, that you liked as a kid and you show it to them and they're like yeah that does rule uh, like, yeah. the worst is when they're like that's fucking lame oh that'll kill you that'll <laughs> you're trying to take me to a park called marine land what the fuck yeah Dude, I you, know get him into you, sports. you know what's funny though fun like enough. when when i was growing up i certainly had all of the stuff that was appropriate for like my age that i loved and but then um any anytime my dad tried to show me stuff i was never like averse to it like i remember when he showed me like blazing saddles i was like yeah, no yeah. this is awesome yeah this is or so airplane. good Airplanes yeah air is a movie <clears throat> that's it rocks or the blues brothers have you seen blues brothers of course hell yes yeah and then he would like this I back when... my kids that. they're like this takes too long yeah they i remember really he my all. dad insisted that i watch like all those old uh like norman lear sitcoms so i remember like we watched like all in the family a bunch and I was in living color, in the sense. It, yeah, in living color. Like I was never, I was never like, yo, this is lame. I always thought it was like, oh, this is really funny. This is cool yeah. shit. Yeah. But then I was also watching like Reno Nine One One and yeah. whatever else was 
on when I was a kid. I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember. I, I can't even remember the good times to be, nowadays. Oh, I love I good times. Snick debut. That's how fucking old I am. Oh, Snick Saturday. Yeah, when that was actually new. What'd yeah, you but... call me? <laughs> oh, hold on. Ha! Gay! Yeah, that was a big one when I was, um, I guess I was in high school when Community was on. Yeah, that was I watched a... Community. That was, that was good. Or yeah, Party that... Down. That was what it was. I, I still Party haven't Down. seen Party Down. I, the first two seasons are really, really good. Like, when they come back, they're probably still fine. But those first ones, before any of those guys blow up, those are the good ones. Yeah, it's crazy how much everything just sucks now. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah man. that's why I don't watch any fucking series or anything anymore. Yeah, everything I, is made to be like a six out of ten. Nothing's good, nothing's bad. It just dude, and you know what? Best. A lot of it, it there was so much mystique before we had technology. Now, if you make a movie, it's like, well, why would why didn't they just look it up on their phones? Like, why wouldn't they just call the cops immediately? It's like you <laughs> everything's can't built out of analytics. It's so difficult to even well, make. Plot yeah, every, every it seems like a lot of things now. A lot of TV and movies are being greenlit. Like the decisions are being made based on. Yeah, like analytics and algorithms rather than just house of cards. Yeah, rather than just like a guy has a has a weird crazy idea. It's more like you know, here's what the for the 18 to 35 demographic, we've crunched all the numbers and ran it through the quantum well, computer and we've determined that people want I don't know, Abbott Elementary, which Black I'm never going to fucking watch. They figured yeah. out that people like political dramas and they like Kevin Spacey, so they made a political drama starring Kevin Spacey. Exactly, which, but, I mean, fair well, enough. That's kind of an no-brainer. Like, at that time, that was like... Yeah, that yeah. was before everyone, before we knew how... To slam talk. dunk right there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, then, when everyone else started <laughs> copying it, then everything became the same. It was all homogenous. Nothing says anything anymore. Would you say homogia? Homogenous. Homogenous. Oh. Word alert. Yeah. Do you need a word alert on that one? Yeah, so, honestly, I think I I think so. Word alert, please. Is it, everything's like the same. Like everything's just kind of like mixed. It's like if you took a bunch of paint and mixed it together, and yeah. you get baby shit. Yeah, you're like, oh, this paint is a, a module. You can't homogenous. Terrible. You cannot homogenous. mix the colors. Yeah, yeah. No paint mixing paint is tricky. Homogenous. Get your ass in the car. Because don't they say if you're gonna if you're gonna mix colors, like mixing light is additive and paint is subtractive i don't know, I don't know. there's like um, a, there's it's like a different like if you're gonna mix paint if you're gonna try and make new colors out of different paints it's like tricky what is uh malcolm mcdowell saying in the fucking michael myers movie dude it's so fucking crazy like it, you see you seem like so airheaded at times and then it's like you know who malcolm mcdowell is yeah yeah he's like well that, actually michael uh black is every color white is the absence of color or is the other way around that is not true at all it's it's the other way around the other way around yeah yeah but that's the scene that made me think of that and yeah i do love malcolm mcdowell you like malcolm mcdowell what's your favorite malcolm mcdowell movie (sighs) clockwork orange okay there we go wow sal you you do have the the soul of an artist well 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 my little droogie has a giant tits and she like jumps out with her massive tits that like three seconds of her Jumping out with her massive tits. That's a great scene in that movie. I prefer when mm-hmm. they murder that woman with the giant phallic object. Oh, yeah. yeah when he cr- crushes bitch, that so. lady with the big penis. Yeah. When they she rape that one lady in front of her husband. Yeah, yeah. And then he, they, he ends up going back to that house. Yeah. yeah. It's a cool house. Yeah. It was a I, cool house. I read that book. I saw the movie and then I read the book. Like uh, I imagine the book's better. The yeah. book is like mostly the same, except at the end of the book, there's like one extra chapter. Like where the where the movie ends in the book, there's like another chapter where he's older, and he's he's just like, man, I was a fucking idiot back then. <laughs> he just <laughs> he just regrets all of it. He's like, I only say that because the narrated bits are the best, and th- those are coming yeah. from the book, right? That, that ending scene though, he's like, I knew I was back. That that shit is pretty tight though. Yeah, I knew yeah. I was back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Kubrick was always really good at finding books and making movies that were better than the books because the only one i've seen is um oh really because yeah i would say like a clockwork orange the movie i think the movie is better than the book the shining is by a country mile better than the book well stephen king has never been able to end it end a book he's bad at ending books and he also 
is really bad at subtlety and nuance and am- like any sort of ambiguity. Because like he the drugs drug- anymore either, so it sucks. He and he stopped doing drugs and he's he's completely fallen off since he got sober. There is something True. to being on the horse and it making something something magical. Like, there's there's a great like if you get really into drugs, you have a nice window in which you can like really make some cool shit if it doesn't kill you. Yeah. <clears throat> and use I mean usually like yeah, cocaine and heroin and those you know, those are all really great drugs for creating things. Um but yeah, the the shining the movie The Shining is just way better than the book cuz like Stephen King just has this um like everything is very um what's the word i'm looking for like in your face like the movie the movie has this undercurrent of it's very ambiguous so you you look at the camera like he breaks the fourth wall he does that a lot yeah but like the throughout the movie the question always is like okay so is the hotel actually haunted or is or they just is he just going like crazy you know and it, it toes that line really well and it keeps you wondering and it's it like there's that like the way it builds that tension is is really cool whereas like it, in a building with no one but your wife and kid will drive you insane exactly yeah whereas like in the book it's oh it's malcolm mcdonald malcolm, malcolm mcdowell malcolm mcdowell oh, i just michael call him michael mcdowell, McDowell. <clears throat> michael the, McDowell. the shining the book um everything is like just explain like stated flat out that you know this hotel is haunted these yeah, are ghosts those. yeah like at one point the fucking that's why we're still talking about the movie and not the book exactly yeah like stephen king hated the, the movie in there. there's a lot of stuff yeah Ste- all stephen books king, are notoriously trash stephen king hated the the kubrick movie and he tried to redo it himself years later with the yeah the, the guy, guy from, from the guy from wings and it's really fucking terrible yeah um, they also did the, the Langoliers. That was rough. Stephen King kind of seems like a big, like Stephen Weiner. Weeb. He's an old man. He's just he's you just know how Neil deGrasse Tyson. It seems like he'd be cool to hang out with, but like it would probably wouldn't be. Well, probably after the same a few Stephen minutes, you're like, all right, this guy just loves hearing himself talk. He was yeah. smart. I'm like, okay, we get it. I think well, Stephen. I the I would say I haven't read like too much Stephen King, but I've read. Read The Shining, I've read It, I've read Desperation. Um, what's it, the Carrie. one? What's the Stephen King movie where the guy gains weight? Fuck, fuck. He thinner. loses weight. Thinner. He, no, th- thinner, yeah. Thinner. He loses weight. No, he's gaining. No. Or no, the movie is called Thinner. Why would yeah, he gain yeah, yeah, weight? He starts, starts fat. He's in a fat suit. He's he losing runs weight. Over a gypsy. It's Robert yeah. John Burke from Yeah, Robocop Gypsy 3. Curse. Yeah. And it's got the guy from fucking Godfather 3, too. Yeah. Ma, um, what do you know about uh, what do you know about gypsy curses? And she's like, oh, <laughs> oh my, my own those gypsies. <laughs> yeah, that's a. I like that movie. That's yeah, Ma says movie. she knows all about it. It's real. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think like the appeal of Stephen King is it's um, you know, you're gonna you're gonna have a nice little romp, I guess, reading one of his books. They're consistent. Interesting They're... premises. Everything's based in Maine. Yeah, everything's in, yeah. You're from Maine. This is yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. Maine yeah. is only known for what Stephen King and lobsters. Lobster. Yeah, Tom lobsters. fucking Brady. Tom Brady. From California. Oh, is he, doesn't he's matter. From... <laughs> Tom Brady. Hey, Sal, do you play sports games? Yeah, I'm a Bills. Are you fan. gonna get college football 25 when it comes out? You know, I gotta get into college, dude. It's the best. Dude, that's I, what everybody I, says. You I watch would not NFL. Ask I'm from any like, college like, except exam. Talk about college sports up north. Like the no, thing is, is like we look at the pro sports. Yeah. Now you're no. sure. That's right. But get Stay. into it. If I can take North Texas to the national championship, dude, or like Texas State. Hell yeah. Oh, that yeah. would be fun to play. U-P-S-A. Yeah, plays <laughs> UNT. Yeah, yeah, I need a, a Texas team to root for because all my teams are it's like eleven of them. Like Blue well, Jays, it, the way Bills. the divisions are set up, that like a lot of college teams, That's Buffalo or Syracuse, isn't it like a lot of college teams? Even if they do really well, they don't really have a shot at like going anywhere. No, That's no. one of the reasons why I don't like college is because like a lot of those guys are are going to be not doing football in a couple of years. Yeah, yeah, but it's still fun to watch. Like the chaos of it all is fun watching. Yeah, upsets is fun. and like the game, like, <laughs> I like playing the games. Like I like playing games on a hard difficulty and just. Like whatever the hardest difficulty is, I'll just start on that. And I do that too. But since that's my baseline, I don't know any different. So if it's I'll a game that I know how to play, like I know what I'm getting into. Yeah. 
So I'll just start with like a shitty college and just. You try to play Madden on. later? I got you ain't got a PS5. Get on my level. Is it not cross platform? You have a Xbox. I got a PC. You got a PC? Um, shit, I'll have to download it again. But yeah, I'd fuck with you. I'll, yeah, I'll man, let's do it. it. Hell yeah! Look at this so you're building friendships. Oh, yeah. um, what's your what's your username? I read that shit. Down. Oh shit! I don't know. We'll I'll give it to you later. We'll I'm trying to think yeah. if it's through. It's probably through EA, which I have no idea. Okay, cool. Hell yeah, that rules. I yeah. haven't had anyone. Normally, I just play by myself. There's no one to play with, so it'd be cool to have somebody actually play against for once. Yeah, yeah, man, I'm, I'm trash, but I'll play you. <laughs> Dude, it should be hell yeah. I, I'm rusty as hell. I, I stopped playing. I get burnt out on them. Oh, like. With Madden, I'll purposely draft a team with all the statistically worst players in the league. So I have a team of like, if my overall is like 54, and I'll just use that team for like six seasons and build them up into something worthwhile. Have you played Retro Bowl on your phone? Yeah, I don't like phone games. Me either. I, I, I'm I so, serious. I, I've never yeah. I've never liked phone games until it's I sure. started playing There's Retro no Bowl. Dense. There's no meat to them. Yeah, phone games suck. All right, all right. That's that's was always my opinion too, and still kind of is. But Retro Bowl is very good. It's like honestly, a whole, I, 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 I horrible. It, like on a couple of flights, I went back to Texas last year. Like on flights, I oh played you it. played it. Yeah, I have played it. It was oh okay. Was fine for I feel like, like the phone games as uh, overall, eh, not for me. Yeah, I feel like the last time portable games were enjoyable was Game Boy Advance SP. Not that far back, I would say. Like the the Nintendo DS was probably like the last time. Yeah, that one was good. The Mario yeah, Kart. Because there. now, because they had the DS and they had the 3DS, which I never got. But I, I guess it's like the same thing, but it's in 3D. Yeah, that, that was just a 3D gimmick. But now it's like, you know, Nintendo has been the leader in portable games for a long time. But like the Switch is too. That's too big. It's what like do y'all think about uh, 3D's nuts? 3ds, I like that. Um, hold on, wait a second. Uh-huh. Man, I don't have a D. De- I don't have anything for that. Um, He's nuts. Dude, you should put some, some old school old Yeah. So the yeah the switch is too big to yeah. just like play. You know, if you're like on a bus or on a like a mega bus, Greyhound. Pulling out a switch is it's too much hardware. It's too big. The battery's not gonna last long enough. Like you're and, playing a Game Gear again or a Lynx. Too yeah, big. and then they have the, they got the the Steam Stream Deck now, which is like oh it's cool, an eight hundred dollar fucking portable system. Well, it's like a portable. It's like a computer. I know that, but it's like, dude, I don't want to. Not travel. that much. I don't want to travel. I don't want to have like my games that much. Yeah, but I don't have in my much. backpack an eight hundred dollar game system. I'm looking at my collection. I'm fucking over it. I got my PS5. Dalton, you can get one for five ninety nine. That's crazy. That's Let's so much money. Let me get y'all both a PS5, dude. Let it's me. like a computer though. PS5 Pro's coming out. I'm about, I'm about to get that. Y'all, it's basically a little handheld computer. It's like yeah. I'm aware of what it is. I mean, sure. When the when no, I, not. look, I'm the first billionaire podcaster. When the podcast takes <laughs> off, I'll have one. Um, are you gonna get one for all your boys sure are you the type like okay i've always imagined if i'm filthy rich i would like anybody well you're one of those things yeah yeah i would totally i would be like the vinnie chase i'd be like let's just go spend money yeah with other people my debt fix my house make it look nice yeah i gotta take care of my debts first and foremost um yeah i would definitely be like but you want one? Let's go get one. Michael, you you're a homeowner. Yes, he's a homeowner. After, after my him? marriage, after the wedding, I mean, homeowner. After, after after the divorce, all that, all everything uh-huh. was dead done. Sold the house, split the profits of the house that we sold. Took that. Well, I'd already bought the house, and then I used the money I got from the selling the house and paid off all my debt. Like bought a new truck, no debt. So all I have for debt is my mortgage, and that's it. Okay, that's good. I am uh, heavily burdened with debt, up up to my fucking nuts. Stuart owns medical stuff, just like all the stuff it took to you know like keep me keep me alive when I had my um, brain accident. So like, yeah, it's not looking good, but I guess uh, I guess podcasting will fix it. Yeah, keep at it, dude. Don't don't worry about that shit. Yeah, I just I feel bad about like the the just forget it. <laughs> what were you gonna say? 
No, it's fine. just like there were there were a lot of there was like a lot of people like family and friends and people that like helped out during that time, and I just I feel bad about like the sacrifices they had to make that I'm like feel like I need to like pay them back somehow, which I'll I guess I'll figure out it's at not some over point. Yet. Do what? It's not over yet. You still got time. But yeah, I got plenty. I got time. Did, the fact that you are aware and you're cognizant of it. Word alert. Yeah. Back no. <laughs> it's on a list a lot of people Dude. don't even consider that they're that like, I don't are like i want to you have a desire to repay them like that's a good thing Dude, Some people, they just consumed and keep moving and Dude, a lot I of people get a lot of help i clock in at a take. job i fucking hate every day to so i can take care of things and i'm not getting paid much money at all because i'm not hitting my quotas for commission i so. also hate my fucking job so yeah i mean but, you know, sales is cool because you can, you don't have to play the game as much. Like with a lot of other jobs, you have to work your way up. Like with sales, if you like can actually sell stuff, you make pretty good money pretty quick. But if you can't, uh, you make dog I shit money. I, I don't have that personality. Like when I, when I was first working at that baby furniture store, I'm like, well, do you want it? Did you not plan this ahead before you came here? Like, was it furniture yes. made out of babies? Um, some of it is like, it's like overseas baby. So it's a little cheaper. They got <laughs> finer skin, less preservatives in their meat. You know, it's, not it's like all of the mix uh, baby parts from Planned Parenthood. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's fantastic. Like, I don't know. We, we can't do anything with it. So we made like, um, this is like an armchair. They'll make dolls. Arms. Arms. They'll make like real dolls and they look like baby simulators, you know, before the baby comes. Didn't they get caught like being like, Hey, can we just get like the goop please? Yeah. Didn't somebody video that? And Gwyneth Paltrow's company is here today. Yeah. Yeah. Then they yeah, just started making remember, candles out of it. Remember that, like a few years ago, when that that was a big conspiracy theory <laughs> that um yeah Wayfair was shipping children and like uh, you'd buy like a chest of drawers named like Christina. Yo. And uh, I saw that. Yeah, like, and they the all the like schizo people, schizo brain people on the internet were like. Yo, this fucking dresser is named Samantha. That mean, that must mean yeah. Samantha's in the dresser. Well, no, it was also like twenty seven thousand dollars. Like, yeah, why it was would really this... expensive furniture, and so all the and people then they are... would there was other things like they would look up, like you, you they would type in a different URL for the same site and get like the European version of the site. And, yeah, like... I mean, I guess it was it was curious. It was odd. And there were just things. Were, there were there were things there. That, yeah, that they were selling like. You, um, you know, like a like a nightstand that was thirty thousand dollars. That's <laughs> odd, but and it would be named like Ethan or something. But I mean, a lot of luxury goods are just like, pretty. <laughs> yeah, a lot of like high end luxury goods are just you know priced. You know, the like the selling point is the price. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's I like you're attracting uh, a certain type of wealth, like the people who will buy something that Do you costs think that much. Thanks do you the think there's brand. pedophile rings? Like, do you oh. think there's like like organized organized networks like, like like Pokemon gym badges, but for pedophiles? Um, I think like so. You... I definitely think Giovanni's behind it all. I fucking knew it. Giovanni... I guess, like, Sal, there's oh. definitely pedophile rings. Like that's been like, proven. Why is that like the the bottom bitch manipulation tactic? Like that's that's such a money tactic for people. Like, what is why is it little kids like? Why is that because, the one thing because that, now why you is can't, that why is that the default base? That even like well because wealthy... it used to it used to be that being gay was bad enough that that was enough to like lord over people and uh yeah now you gotta, le like you leverage know. against them to get them you gotta to keep do your pushing bidding. the envelope you gotta keep pushing the envelope it's not it's not anything anymore yeah so like, now it's, pay now yeah That's so now it's like it's fine to be gay now so it's like what not, can we not yeah what can we not get excited. on this what can we get on somebody so that we control them. <laughs> It's like, well, we'll goad uh, world leaders and owners of corporations into fucking children. And then now that they're in our network of ch kid fuckers, we control them because... Yo, I mean, kid fucker! Do all, do all of them want to kids? Because, like, raising kids those ages, like, if you ever have a conversation with them, like, Oh, I would never want to fuck one of these. Like, just sit down and chat with them. These yeah, are I children. think if you're a pedophile, you're not, like a, you're uh, not fucking a, a kid for the conversation. You're not to get to know them on a personal level. You're sort of just, you're muscling through that. Yeah, it's it's kind of a hit it and quit it situation. It's yeah. not like we're trying to get, you're trying to get to know them. Yeah. But I, I think it's, 
I, who knows? Like, they've never released, like, who all was on those uh, flight logs, like, who all went to the island. Um, There's going to be other big, though. Like, some of them were like, eh, I just don't feel like fucking kids. You got, like, I, a lot of money or drugs or something? Like, yeah, I don't. I, I, I'm trying big. to eat. Trying to eat fruit snacks off a there, twelve. There has to be there has to be a He's distinction wild. between. Can we, kill, can we kill somebody? There has <laughs> to be a distinction between like because you see the like to catch a predator and this new wave of pedo pedo hunters online. Yo, have you when seen they, the ones that that prank people? Like yeah. they go to Walmart and they're like this guy's here to meet a fifteen year old, and it's like a prank. It's like that's bro, a great that's... that's a great way to get fucking killed. That's yeah. like, yeah. so stupid. You will get fucked up. Yeah. But no, I mean, like you see those videos and you see the people that they're catching, and oh, like God, those so guys, bad. those pedophiles are fucked up. Like those are, yeah. you know, uh, like retards. Well, and yeah, I was gonna say it's crazy how many of them. Seem yeah, like they have something. They're just like people who are not don't seem like functioning members of society to begin with. Right. If you were, so, if you were to read those transcripts, you'd be like, how did anyone fall for this? Like us reading it, we could tell like, oh, this is oh this, yeah, this is not a child I, they're talking to. That's what I'm saying. They're they're like equal parts like retarded and horny for kid pussy that they're just blinded by how obvious this trap is. <clears throat> and I've I've been I look I've been horny I'm dumb and horny but I'm horny for adult women, and I've been like almost duped into some like probably lo- like getting my identity stolen. Because, uh, you know, I'm messaging back and forth with, uh, like, a bot or some program. Some guy in India. Yeah, they a guy wanna, in if India. If they want to go to WhatsApp, that's the scam. If they look Asian, like, we're going through all the apps, there's a lot of scams. Like, yeah, so I, was, I like, say, thank thank God I'm not a pedophile, because I probably would fall for it. I was back, I was still fucking around on Craigslist back when they still had the the casual encounters in the back. That was, that was some. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, I, I used know. to... I never did that. I used to go to that page and I was always too scared to like pull the trigger on any of that. I met a few. But I, I did Jesus. eventually do what? Hey, my, I met a few. I met a few. Michael, who, who keeps looking in your window there in the door? Nobody. It's just the lights from the neighbors across the street. Yeah, it's just cars. Doesn't that freak you out? I see it every day. You got guns? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where's the soundboard? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about, dude. That's good, dude. Yeah, you're in good shape. I uh, should get one. I should. It's not. You a don't have one. a firearm. I'm, like, just never. He was a cleric. Yeah. I'm like, I had one within the army, but like, just owned my. If I had my way, I would like to own the M16 I was issued in the army. But you can't buy those piece of shit M16s. You can get like an M4 and fucking get, a, it get an AR. I don't. I want that piece of shit that I have. I get, a hard, hard, get a hard R. The N word. They don't have any hard R's where I'm from. They don't exist. <laughs> in the military? No, in Maine. There's no. There's not. None of them. Oh there. yeah, but there I are didn't... racists in Maine. There's like it's like very. No, no, they're racist, but like, there's no blacks up there. Like, I didn't yeah. have a conversation. They with don't even. They they, they they only know. They only know the thing they're racist against in like the abstract. They're like, yeah, like are you different? They... Are you from away? You, yeah, no they, they've never even before. seen a black person in real life. Like dude. we would stop and look at a black person, not because we were racist. We would just be like, "Oh, we've never seen one before." Like, "Oh, right." Black yeah, it's it's like when you go up north and you see a moose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, damn. we saw a lot of moose. We had a town up there. A lot People of are like slowing down their cars, like to you look have at them. To. Moose are fucking <laughs> enormous. If you hit a moose, his legs are so high up, its entire body is going to land right on your windshield, and you're fucking dead. Oh yeah, but if you drive fast enough. He'll just hit you're the ground faster. Like no, if you drive dead. fast enough, it'll just be like, and he'll that's just what hit they the ground. say that if you if you're about to hit a moose, they actually say to go faster so that you just go straight through it, straight break all four legs. Yeah, that way it that's... doesn't damage your car. Uh, okay, <laughs> they yeah, do the, say they do it's say physics, that. it's okay. science. Speaking you of know? physics, I heard uh, the government did nine eleven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Y'all see these videos? Yes. Yeah, with all the like the control. Yeah, I see that shit on Twitter. Why is it? It's like it's like every couple of years this this comes back really like mainstream. It's like, it's like the John Benet Ramsey for like dudes. Women love the John mm-hmm. Benet Ramsey thing for twenty years. Yeah, women women love like stories about people getting murdered and slaughtered. 
and yeah. dudes love like global conspiracy. Conspiracy. It's, like, it's a lot yeah, of they, they, women I have met that love murder mysteries. They love women. Yeah. Women always fantasize about getting raped, and guys fantasize about being duped by everyone around them. Dude, my favorite, my like, favorite if... is uh, fi- like financial crimes. Like that's the shit that I I like that more than any murder than any sort of coup d'etats happening or yeah you know it's it's like how bankrupt. how do they get away with it yeah like i saw like that that robert de niro bernie madoff movie the wizard of lies I, that was the shit that was all i was like yo this is my shit right here because it's there was that 30 for 30 where the guy tried to buy the islanders and had like 30 grand he's just trying to lie to motherfuckers to drive, <laughs> no drive i gotta check that out team. There's a 30 Dude, for 30 people on. that that kind of people that pretend to have money. I don't understand that because yeah. if I'm if I'm anywhere and like I don't think I can afford it, I'm so fucking nervous. Dumb. And people pretend like they have money and like they yeah. get away with it sometimes. Well, that's yeah. at those high levels of finance, like Madoff and Big Short and all that. That's all it is. It's like everybody is like trading in fantasy. The, yeah, nobody actually has the money. The, the stock that's going up and down is the confidence in that stock. Yeah, the, there's no money there. <laughs> what is money, really? That's why I'm trying to buy gold, bro. Yeah, get gold, but, get it done. Get gold bars. Buy Earth gold bars money. now. But I mean, but what even is paper then, money anyway? Even then, even with gold, paper money, fiat currency, crypto why, no. stocks, gold all is of a valuable. It, no, but people all of actually it, want the gold itself. But Most the of thing, it's but, some cost balancing. Get the fuck the, out of there. Yeah, the thing the thing about all of it is there the you know there is no like intrinsic value with any of it. Like it's a, it's an intangible value. Just that's, literally, people wear gold. Uh, I didn't Sal. Stay with me. I get that gold looks cool. It's shiny. It looks nice. It, if 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 a fucking nuke goes off. There's like the gold has no value. It you would though. I mean? People would still be rocking the gold. Be like, yeah, hey, remember when everyone had gold? I, I'm still the last motherfucker. I'm a ghoul and I got gold. Sure, Bitch. but like if you watch, if you, my skin. if you play yeah. Fallout, if you play Fallout, you'll know that none none of the old currencies have any value. The currency is oh, yes. cap. Uh pre pre war money does have some value. But what to I'm make, saying is, but it's what is the what is the resource? Bottle yeah. caps Bottle and water caps. caps made of. We literally just said all of this out. Uh, no. Aluminum. Okay, but and but what, what is I, gold? Okay, but here's but stay with me because all, here's what here's all. what I'm saying is that any form of currency, whether it's gold or fiat currency or crypto or any of it, only has as much value as the people have faith in it. Yeah. So it's not that gold is any more or less valuable than the dollar or Bitcoin or any of that. It's it's just like where people's heads are at any given moment. I really beg to differ. And so that's you can beg all you want, but I mean this is this no is because like, dollars and Bitcoin and stuff those represent something else. But gold is just like a cool ass shiny metal that people like. People like it, right? But they don't I like. Mean, I don't like paper money. Is like I paper little pieces of paper you just to me. Make more paper money. They I like what it represents. That there's only a set amount of gold in the world. Like I yeah. might use that money to buy gold. But like gold is something that people desire. Oh, like oh. all the money could be gone and motherfuckers would still have bars of gold. They're not going to leave I, that behind. I guess that makes sense. But I'm saying that in terms of any, my mind, I'm, okay. but like after the, <laughs> after the fucking bombs fell, fall, like that's just a cool looking paperweight. That gold will have no yeah. care. This is just, a I don't, paper. but it doesn't Food now. Like, more people value. like See, the thing it is. Back. I, Sal, you, you're not you using just, your gold to buy anything. You just you like just have, you just have an Italian brain. Like you can't get off the fact that it's just a shiny metal. <laughs> you just the, the the gold. I'm not saying to buy it like as a fucking right. with this bar. But I'm just, saying that just, it doesn't. It only and, uh, has value as long as we say it does. Also, if we, if we just changed and decided copper was more valuable copper would be more valuable and the difference is you could make more money and more and more crypto gold is a finite resource i already said that crypto is finite depending on the crypto i know we did this last episode we've done we've talked about it we don't have to yeah, keep talking sucks. about actually let's check my crypto investments real quick that's a, oh, hey, sal God. thank you for bringing that up hey let me do it for you you lost money <clears throat> oh yeah dude i'm definitely losing money <laughs> i got i got, I got lists i got a list of shit Let's see. Here. I do have a lot of questions. I do have some questions because, like, being married, I was out of the internet world. Like, the terminally online I was was a very different type of terminal. You guys had like a joint MySpace. Well, account. Sa- uh, Michael, I go ahead. 
like my internet was like you remember afro ninja the guy who did the backflip and bounced his head off the ground yes like that internet that very pure silly internet like the gi joe infomercials like the, the psa the gi joe psa is that sort of internet that was where i left the internet then i got married and was not nearly as connected then i come back and there's like people online telling you how to live your life and they all seem like a bunch of faggots the internet is uh yeah it's it's uh it's it's chaotic now it's definitely yeah. it feels very combative nowadays yeah. like who's sam hyde I hear <laughs> who is he? <laughs> i hear everyone talk about him but like who, i don't like, even i couldn't tell you okay i'm not interested in looking him up it's like i know was, i know I all about like, this who the fuck, is he the like, ugly guy with the fucking round glasses? Yes, yeah. Gross. So I'm not listening to ugly people. Or fat Sam people. Hyde is actually probably born from the internet that you once knew. Okay. Because he he it was him and Nick Rochefort and uh, I forget the other guy. I don't know. There was a but they there was a sketch group. I forget what it was called at the time, but it eventually became Million Dollar Extreme, and they were doing uh, sketches for the internet. And then, um, and they were, and, and they were all like very, very funny. And and Sam also would do these himself. He's like this, uh, this guy who likes to blur the lines between performance and reality. So it's uh, like, I, imagine like a extremely racist Andy Kaufman, <laughs> like because he did, he did a, he did a. Yeah, Sam Hyde used to do these like stunts, sort of like he did a um. There was a TEDx event at Drexel University years ago, and he gave a TEDx talk at Drexel where he was dressed in like Somali warlord armor, and nice. yeah, you can find it's like a twenty minute video, and it's called the twenty seventy paradigm shift, and he somehow like weaselled his way onto this TEDx stage. And just said a bunch of like nonsense for twenty minutes, but just in the cadence of a TED talk, and kind of br- honestly, like brilliantly exposed like how stupid TED talks are, like how empty they can be, because he's just saying yeah. like nothing he says makes any sense. It's all like ridiculous. Like at one point he's like twenty seventy Israel, bye bye, getting rid of it, which. Actually, might like that. that might come true? Actually, what are TED talks? It's like a Who's I, Ted. It... <laughs> Ted is uh, the guy that he was the first one, right? He was. Uh, it's I think it's Ted Turner. No, I don't know. I don't know who. No, it stands for um, teaching. Teaching everybody does shit, yo. To, yes, teaching everybody does shit, yo. I don't. Yeah, they, they're like informative talks where somebody is is like, we made we made a software where you can, I don't know. <laughs> it's like a guy who made a software, and he's like, when I was starting out, I only had a three hundred thousand dollar loan from my dad, and with that, I was able to. I'm tired of hearing rich people. They yeah. suck. Yeah. I'm tired of rich people. Yeah, it's a, I I don't I don't really know well, any comedian when you find out they came from a rich background I'm just out. Like, that's a lot me. of them. I, mean, I know I'm learning that. Like, yeah, I mean, but that's like up. all throughout history. A lot of yeah. people that work in the arts, like whatever it may be, painting, writing, comedy. Yeah, usually it's people who were afforded a level of like they got the kind of money to be creative. Yeah, they got the money where they can focus on this shit and like really pursue it. <clears throat> And maybe they are the most qualified because, like, poor people grow up with such a strict, like, strict limitations. They don't, you know, they don't read. They don't. Well, even uh, if I did have that kind of time, I wouldn't make art. I would do other shit. Yeah. Oh, like, there's plenty of rich kids. Exercise. Just, go lift weights. Shoot some hoops. I do. Yeah. Other m- most rich kids are just dipshits, which is fine. Yeah. But then a lot of a lot of the rich kids that get in, like, a lot of artists are just rich kids who were decided to be productive. I guess. Yeah. Um, and they always downplay it. They're always like embarrassed by it when it's like, no, nah, yeah, it's they actually always try to say like, oh, I didn't really come from anything. Like, yeah, like like oh, like, Tom... I have somebody like, yes, my parents were rich. They bought me into this. Suck my dick. I'm like, all right, I don't like you, but you own it, dude. There was a guy. Like, there was a guy like that in New York, and he he always made me laugh, and everybody fucking hated him. But he would just go on stage and be like, 
Yeah, I was born rich. I'm richer than everyone in this fucking room. Suck my dick. I can I can get behind that because at least he's being <laughs> honest. Yeah, I mean, I it, like the guy, but it's not bullshit. It, it dude, it made, it made me laugh so hard. <laughs> just how antagonistic he, everybody fucking hated him. <laughs> like, he would just go on stage and be like, "I have more money than you. I have more money than you." <laughs> Damn, the why is that? That guy rocks. Yeah, he was. I'd awesome. much rather be that. Don't act humble when you've had a fucking. Yeah, fishing. that's a lot of yeah. Like like I think like. Segura and Kreischer try to downplay how wealthy their dads are. Dude, I've been hating Kreischer since the beginning. I hated <laughs> him from the fucking start. <laughs> he I am a fucking hipster hater of Kreischer. That fucking guy stinks. He's that really, stinks. it's bad. He's awful. Just He just can't not talk about himself. You want to talk about like an inflated market. Like if, if money, you know, money has no real value. There's like this new... um Sim- similar to like the fugazi of the stock market yes. in finance the the fucking i guess like rogan's fear of comedians it's like it's just like a ton of guys who are have like get to have these careers now based on fucking nothing they're fucking yeah. arena acts yeah or we're yeah we're a fucking arena, arena act now <laughs> yeah it's it's like these guys who i feel like i i go i'm i feel like i'm going crazy like if i see a lot of these guys well, in they, that, they're not relatable anymore. They get too big, and I can't they never were them. relatable. That's the thing is like yeah. I don't even they played understand. it off for a while. Then we find out what they're what, what they came from. Like, yeah, oh. I don't even understand. Like the, it seems like this success <laughs> just comes from being friends with Joe Rogan. Yeah, <laughs> like it, because you see their creative output, like what <laughs> they're actually doing comedically, and I go, "Am I crazy or does this fucking suck?" Like I don't understand like what led to this career. Yeah. Uh, and I, I guess it's just networking. That's all. I mean, that's everything. Exactly. Like every fucking business is just who you know. Yeah. Um. I mean, yeah, that's how I got everything I got. Just meeting people and fucking stumbling into shit. I mean, that's the only thing that's saving me right now. Is like I I had my I got my tentacles burrowed in the community enough that when I decided to start coming back, there you know I people hit me up and want to you know, like crack and Robbie and all of them. It's just like, I actually respect them as a, you know, artist or whatever you want to call what they do. Crack, shout out to Robbie. Yeah. They shout Robbie. out to shout out to the Crowder boys. I'm giving both of them 20 bucks too. They were. <clears throat> yeah. Oh dude, yeah. you, you are, you're in streaming. You're what we call a whale. Michael. Yes. You, I'm aware. What I'm probably going to do is like lower my Patreon. Cause it's more fun to ship in during live. Yeah. Time. But yeah, but it's I would far more fun. Uh, yeah, you're another guy where I'm. I would say go ahead and downgrade yeah. your Patreon. You got the yeah. decal. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you could go. Get my ahead. son to hold it, and take a picture, and he's like, no. He wanted no part of my work. No, I appreciate, man. I didn't think I didn't think that that was gonna work with anybody, and I think like four people got decals, so it's a win in my book. Hell yeah, twenty five bucks a month. <laughs> Rocks. Hopefully we can get enough money so we can have like a like a meet and greet or some shit like that. That would be fun. Cool. Yeah, like, I would. Lunchers. Yeah, I would love to get everything cooking this and Crowder Boys and all of it to where we can like start going places and yeah, that'd be fun. You know, actually be successful and have, live in nice lives and <laughs> go meet people. <laughs> Just um, I know I I know me and Crack definitely are uh, we're brokies and I think Rob, that's all right. I don't know what Robbie's deal is, but it seems like he's on a first class flight every week going somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Someplace new. It seems like Robbie did have a pretty, pretty not too bad upbringing, but. Yeah, just, I'm not going to reveal yeah, too she, much. No, I like Robbie. I like Robbie. I had, he, Robbie I had, seems like he grew up rich as fuck. I had dinner with it's Robbie. Definitely nicer than anything we've had. Yeah. But I, I, that's I had, not his fault. I had Tell dinner me. with uh, Robbie and his mom once. I, th- I think Robbie grew up. Uh, I think he. Did, I think they did okay. Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> growing up in San Francisco, like, that ain't cheap. That ain't fucking yeah. cheap. I think if if the steakhouse that she took us to and what she paid for is any indication of his upbringing, I think they did fine. Yeah, that's that's fine though. Like, you oh, see, it's he, yeah. I don't cute. like. He wants to be famous. He's not being a phony about it. Like, it's easy to like Robbie. I don't get why people hate on Robbie. It's fun to like talk shit about her but like i genuinely think robbie's a nice person robbie's a good dude robbie's like an actual friend because when i was 
turning my back on everyone in my um when I was insane and being a dickhead to everybody. He actually like stuck stuck by me and was one of the people that was like very concerned and trying to make sure I didn't die and just stayed a friend. And even, yeah, when I came out of all of it in the last few months, you know, we we're working together again and building, building something pretty cool with the, um, yeah. the Crowder boys. Crowder boys really cool. It's fun. Good time. Crowder boys yeah, as tight. opposed to, uh, you know, as opposed I guess to what? you don't like this show anymore, huh? No, Corn Fed, Corn Fed, oh, oh, Sal. Look, awesome. Here's the thing, Sal. You're the star of Corn Fed. Yeah, yeah. You're the star you're the of this star. show. I'm, I'm the, I'm the lobbyist. Everyone's got their part. Michael's the lobbyist. Oh, to, but to answer your question, so uh, Sam Hyde, who I'm not a fan of anymore, to be honest with you, but back in the day, I really enjoyed what he did because he, they did these sketches and it, uh, they became Million Dollar Extreme, and then Adult Swim picked up million dollar extreme to do a sketch show for the channel and they had a season of the sketch show and it was at this was back in like 2015 it was like dear i think during the trump campaign yeah, and so and so it was like at that time you know tim heidecker's always been one of the golden boys of adult swim and so at that time it was revealed that sam hyde was uh, I think not just a Trump supporter, but he donated like thousands of dollars to a neo-Nazi organization, like some sort of like storm front nice. or storm yeah. born or something. And so Tim Heidecker, storm yeah, storm bot, something like that. And so Tim Heidecker made a stink about it and was like, Hey, I'm not going to like be on the same network as this fucking dude. So it's either him or me. That's the way I remember it. And so, Sam Million Dollar Extreme gets like kicked off the network, show gets canceled, and then Sam just became this extremely weird guy on the internet since then. Like he kind of he kind of like went underground for a while, and it seemed like he might have not been allowed online on a lot of places. And then it's like within the last two or three years, he's had he's having this resurgence. And like, what advice does he give? Who listen? Who's his audience? He, yeah, he that's saying? the that's the weirdest thing about him is he does these like he's done like a bunch of self help videos and and uh, like trying to be like a guru for people. But this he's like, a he, Black Phillip show. Yeah, it's it's definitely a lot of like Black Phillip type shit for sure. And um, it, it, more than anything, he's just a trickster. Black Phillip. Black Phillip was the greatest the, fucking podcast ever made. It was Patrice O'Neill's uh like dating episodes of glory. Yeah, it nice. was his like dating advice. It's really fucking funny. Yeah. Like after getting divorced and like separated, I listened to that shit a lot. I don't know how good it is as far as like building It all depends on what message you take out of it. Like I took like no matter good or bad, it's your fault. Like own it. Like there was some shit. It wasn't putting on other people, like just owning my mistakes and learning from that. Like yeah the, that's a good message yeah, now, there, was, the, there are some good parts of it and most of it is some of it's also insane the shit that him and dante say about women i'm like well i don't know if this is good for building worthwhile no. uh, bonds with women but it's great for manipulating them and oh yeah <laughs> keeping them under your thumb <laughs> dude i'll tell you what though i saw i saw patrice's widow do stand up uh, fucking, yeah and she's not funny at all i was like yo i wish patrice was alive just so he could fucking stop this from happening he was a grifter right from the start who was it was it beige frequency made the documentary about she took all that money and they're still in the documentary yo, oh yeah that did happen yeah she got she like got a bunch of money to make this yeah. documentary and then and like every I time she it, had an interview she'd be like more and more closer to being married to him like it's like i was his girlfriend i was his fiance we were pretty much married we no, we were kind of married. Like every time she was gone, she was more and more in a relationship with a dead man. Like, yeah, man. I think the do the documentary did eventually come out. I remember it fucking <laughs> sucked. I remember not enjoying it. Um, I don't know if you saw it, but it was. It seemed like a lot of uh, you know, he's dead, so he can't speak for himself, and like a lot of the shit she was saying. Is I was like, I don't think, I don't think any of this is true. No, it was definitely through her lens, and she was never fucking funny. Same thing, like, Burr's funny, but his wife isn't funny. He's, she's just married to, like, just because you're married to a comedian doesn't make you fucking funny. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't transfer, like, LSD, where if it touches you on this, if it touches your skin, you absorb it. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, you like Rogue. Like Rogue, yeah. 
Maximum. Well, that actually that might actually be the case with Burr's wife. I think she is sucking the fucking life out of him. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. They seem to love each other, but hey, if they're happy, it is what it is. I mean, what do you I, it's like they're set for life. They're fine. And he's done a lot of good work already that if everything he does moving forward just sucks shit, that's fine. I that's think the, so. That's the case. Okay, well, yeah, did Who's Red Bar? Do what? Who's Red Bar? <laughs> I've seen it's, you review his stuff, but like, who the fuck is he? It's so funny to talk. To, you're like one of the few people, aside from Sal, who I know who's not extremely online. So it's funny. Yeah, also, I have, I've been afraid to ask that same question. Like, I it's, got it's, real shit to fucking handle. It's <laughs> funny to hear these questions and get to introduce people to this. I, I was afraid to ask what Red Bar is. Red Bar, Red, Red Bar is this guy, Mike David, who is, I, I guess, like nature's, you know, like the the laws of. What did he fail at before he became this? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> he failed at something and then fell on this. That's but you know, you know how they, but what, like, I guess, like one of the laws of nature or ther- thermodynamics or whatever is like for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And so Red Bar is, I guess, just Nate, like nature taking its course and creating the... Um, watches uh, the Watchmen. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Who watches the Watchmen. Yeah. And so Red Bar is, he's he's just a, he's like a heel on the internet who yeah. does the, he does like eight hour broadcasts. Fucking meanders. I always listen to your shit. Like when you were like... When you're like fast forward, like get to the I, yeah. Point. There's people. There, there's get people. Who, there's people who are hardcore Red Bar fans who can sit through all that. And I honestly, I can't. No. I think Red Bar has a lot of moments that are very funny, but then a lot of it is just him. Yeah, just meandering and yapping. And I'm like, just get, get to it, get on with it. But he's got to fill eight hours. Uh, and he just, yeah, he just critiques comedians in in the way that comedians don't really critique each other at least publicly so um, every a, do what is he a failed comedian maybe i don't know i don't know what his like actual story is he he's just he's just like a guy who found like created this market for himself where he's like i'm the professional g- guy who hates comedians <laughs> i've already had that there's a there's a podcast called who are these podcasts uh i think i think he has beef with them maybe i don't know okay. He's yeah. Like, he's at least, their, at least their show's an hour and they get to the point. Yeah, he, Red Bar is just sort of like a heel to the comedy community. I yeah. mean, who? I a lot you of his. Cr- you need that to go like no, you ain't, you ain't funny. Yeah, you need, you need that. Call it is. Out. It is like if you if you're an actual <clears throat> artist who understands criticism, and you see what Red Bar is doing, like you get it, and it doesn't yeah. like it doesn't bother you. You got to take the piss out of everything. You can't. Yeah. Take- but a lot of a lot of comics, and I, I think this is the value of Red Bar, is a lot of comics are like up their own asses yeah. and have forgotten that like not everything they do is good. And maybe a lot yeah. of what they do sucks. Like Schultz, what's up with him? That guy is a fucking spaz. Man, I don't know. I, you know, I, uh, I met him years ago. I emceed for him at the Dallas Hyenas. And at the time, he he was a nice dude. Like, I enjoyed hanging out in the green room with him, and he was decent to talk to. And he had a fucking huge fan base even then. Like, that audience was was ready to go. To. Do what? Who is, who is his fan base? Like, what's his demographic <laughs> that he caters to? Um... I don't How many know. people that use the date rape drug? Like pseudo intellectuals and bros and bimbos. I don't know. I know I look like it, but I don't hang out with bros. That that culture really like turned me off. It was very gross. Like I tried to. I wanted to be part of it so bad. I pledged a fraternity in college and I got kicked out after like two weeks. You got kicked out? You I didn't got have kicked enough out. drive. You didn't have I, enough discipline. You never told me no. this. No I did I did rush week. And then I became a pledge of the Sigma Phi Epsilon fraternity, Texas Beta chapter at the University of North Texas. You can't be a beta, man. And then, um, yeah, I just, uh, I was going there like every night for these parties and just getting way too wasted and was like missing classes and exams and just like making an ass of myself to, to where they were like, 
you know, even for a fraternity, they had to like pull me aside and be like, "Hey, man, you're like you're a fucking problem. We can't have you wow. be a part of this." You were the Bam Margera of the fraternity. I was the Bam. <laughs> yeah, I was the Bam Margera. So they're like, everybody. "Listen, we know this is all fun and games." I wanted it so bad. I wanted to be a part of something so bad. I was like, "Yo, I'll buy." You the... Join the fucking military. I'll buy the shirts. I'll buy the shirts. We did all that shit too. There was no fraternities. We just all just drank. There was no games. We just fucking drank a lot. Shit, I did more drugs in the army than at that point in my life. Yeah, fraternities is just rich guys who, if they were poor, would have joined the military, but they grew up with money. Yeah. Um, Because it's really expensive. It's like, to be in a fraternity, you have to pay, like, you know, along with your tuition to go to college, it's like thousands of extra dollars a month to be in the fraternity. Or or a semester. That was never an option. We never once went to college fucking once college is weird and college is i guess for like the last 15 20 years maybe the college has kind of become devalued and it feels like a lot of people that are being told to go to college nowadays is kind of being sold a false bill of goods because i mean how many stories do you hear about people that go to college for four years and get all this debt how many comedians have degrees you don't need yeah Yeah, exactly. You get and like how many stories do you hear about people who get these four year degrees and then like struggle to find work? Which is yeah. like, well, that was the promise of going to college was that like whatever I do, in a job where the only job is teaching that teaching that um, class. Yeah, because I I remember being told they said like what you know no matter what you major in just the, the there's value in this education and you'll yeah, be just able having to- a degree. Yeah, you, and you you'll be able to find work that you otherwise would not have been able to find, and that was not that was not true at all. <laughs> they saturated the market. They told everybody that if everybody yeah, got a degree, nobody. I, got a degree. I mean, at the time that I went to UNT, and this was twenty eleven, was when my the beginning of my freshman year. They they were bragging, they were boasting about the fact that there were thirty six thousand students on that campus. Which, like, thinking back on it, it's like, that's all. Are you just accepting everybody that applies? Yeah. There's, like, way too many people. So it's, uh, it stands to reason. It's like, well, not everybody that comes out of this is going to be able to find a job. And, I mean, everything's changed so much now that I know people who even got, like, computer science degrees who are struggling to find work because all those, everything's getting automated. I went to college. I just could never make it in the building. Every day I would drive there and I would you couldn't fit like, you there. couldn't fit through the door. I'd smoke a bowl. That bar in class. the middle. They got the double doors, but the metal bar right in the middle. You gotta get that fucking thing out of it. Yeah, thing. I had they'd put me in through the roof. Yeah. No, I just mean some guys Drop. would start smoking weed and then like all of a sudden next thing you know would be like I think it already oh, class already started. Boy. Zah, yeah. zah, zah, zah. <laughs> and then we would just fuck off. Yeah. We just drink a lot. Like, as soon as we got off at, like, four, we would just get fucked. Dude, I, dr- I drank so fucking much in college. I was black. Dude, I blacked out so much. I didn't realize that you're not supposed to black out. <laughs> oh, yeah. I definitely blacked out a few times. Go Like, being in Texas. Like, I love being in Texas was a lot of fun. I had a good time there. Yeah, Texas is fun, and it's definitely. Well, I do have some Texas questions. So. Go ahead. All right. Um, Do you guys know who SPM is? SPM South Park Mexican. No. Okay. He's a he's a Spanish Texas rapper. Uh what else? Um do you guys ever drink um Big Red the soda? Mm-hmm. I've had it. Yes. Um uh, it's not a regular it's not, you know, on tap for me regularly. But every now and then it's like a novelty drink. It's okay. it's, it's a nice occasional beverage. I it's just it. it's way too sweet. It's very very sweet and it has a I don't know even know what the flavor is supposed to be. But the cherry? No, it's not cherry. I truly... big red? No, it's uh. Was it cream? It's big soda? red. I know, it's but like what is bu- the... it's? It's bubble gum. Is it bubble gum? Oh, I, that I actually it's... that sounds about right because it it doesn't it it tastes like it doesn't taste like it looks. <laughs> Let me hold on because I, I yeah I've had cool. big red and I've had big blue and I think they might be the same flavor. Um, and it says, so it was created in 1937 by Grover C. Thompson, 
and R.H. Rourke That's in Waco. That's a name Waco, you don't see anymore. There's no more Grovers. Waco, Texas, and originally known as Sun Tang Red Cream Soda. It Sun is an American variety of cream soda and a special off, and there's also Big Blue. So it's, yeah, it's like a cream soda, I guess. Lord, I'm about to buzz. Oh, to you, buzz. Hold on. Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have any more Lad Boys t-shirts? I got it, yeah, somewhere. I need to sell them. Get, damn it. I, can I get one? I definitely yeah, I'll them. find them. I'll sell them. Yeah, you know, yeah. we got a 150 Father Deer Hands t-shirts to sell. <laughs> Dude, we should make some Father... <laughs> we'll make some Father Deer Hands shirts. You know, <laughs> people are still asking for Loud Boys shirts. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, what's gooning? Gooning? Oh, yeah, come what's on, gooning? Michael. Do you know what edging is? Yes. So it's, Do you I know what New Boot just... Goofing is? New we, of, oh, of course, yeah. we know what Nobu Goofin is. The, the, Nobu yeah, Goofin. the Zapateria La Ballerina. <laughs> <Good. laughs> Nobu Goofin, he loves that. Nobu Nobu Goofin. Goofin is so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think there might be some distinction between edging and gooning. I'm not sure, but gooning is yeah. just just jagging off for a long time without busting. Okay, what's a goon cave? That's just where your your like your setup, like your oh. fucking three monitors and your computer just where you go to jack off for 12 hours oh um, you're probably gonna hate me for this one dalton but uh why don't an hold on sal interrupted what'd Sorry. you say michael whataburger sucks why oh you we, whataburger sucks oh, <laughs> why do you think that it's yeah. bland it's uninspired there's no soul there's no heart to it there's how, nothing how many times have you eaten like, there when i was in texas Probably and what like, did you eat there like one time? Like fifty to sixty times throughout. I will, really? I will say they're, they like, they. I didn't have control what, of what did I you eat. I, what were you getting? Good bacon, egg, and cheese. Get the breakfast sandwiches. And like, the breakfast sandwiches Seriously? are so good. The breakfast on a bun. So you you've, you've gotten is. stuff off their menu. It just didn't do it for me. Just the what more are you looking for in a fast food? I don't know if you were if some you were heart, some love. It just didn't. What do you mean? How, hold on, Dalton. <laughs> What the fuck are you talking about? It's not QT. It's not, it's a not QT. QT's better. Their breakfast pizza is better than anything. Out of well, hold on. They're bre yeah, because breakfast pizza rules. Yeah, breakfast pizza. I do <laughs> love. Yeah, but they're not serving up breakfast pizza at Waterburger. What Waterburger used you to get on my level? You get a honey butter chicken biscuit sandwich. The honey butter chicken biscuit is good. You can get a jalapeno cheddar biscuit with fucking a real egg on that bitch. The breakfast at Waterburger is very good. This is, it just didn't do it for you me. You ever had a sweet and spicy bacon burger at 2 a.m.? <laughs> the, um, I'm more, I, I got the wraps a lot, like the chicken wraps. Yeah, that's your problem. Okay. You, you just weren't ordering, right? Yeah, like anything at a wrap at a restaurant, like any sort of snack wrap. I'm like, oh, gas station food. I fucking love gas station uh, food. I love gas station that's my food. Biggest product. Whataburger used to have an item. And I don't know if you were there when they had this. They haven't had I they haven't had it in years. It was a it was a transcendent fast food experience. It was the A1 thick and hearty burger. That Perfect. that was awesome. And they haven't Perfect. had that in some time. But I mean, even now, you know, they have. Remember when, like, the new burger was like a big deal? It was like national news. Like, they would talk about Hardy's. a new burger. Anytime a new Hardy's burger would come out, like, the yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess, yeah. I mean, per, you know, everybody has their own personal preference. I mean, I grew up with Whataburger, so it has like a special place in my heart. And I remember in Texas when um. In and Out started expanding, and they start building them in Texas and you know being excited and be like oh this is that place in california i heard about in and out and i remember in -Out eating sucks. in it yeah i remember eating there for the first time and going this fucking sucks is it that bad i had it i was oh, so disappointed bro it is not good and people in california say like oh you gotta yeah. eat one in california and i'm like it can't be dude well, they're they're you describe, when you were they're talking about far away from their distribution centers that's right. why it's such no. a slow expansion they can no. only be so far away because everything they get is fresh. In, in and out is really bad. Michael, what you said about Whataburger, you described In and Out soulless. Yeah. The, it, it, it doesn't have that grunge of a fast food place with that. The taste fries in. are dog shit. Yeah, dog. I mean, yeah. I need some crispy fries. I can't yeah, soulless. The, That's how I would describe the fries it. at In and Out are like. It's unreal how bad the fries are. Now there is a regional place in New York that's that uh, lives up to its uh, reputation. Shake the Shack? Uh, Shake Shack is very good. Yeah, we got it's just it's just extremely expensive. It's like yeah, 
They're good. It's a little burger. It's a small burger. The shakes are very good. The shakes are great. I'm not a fan of crinkle cut fries. I like crinkle cut. I love, dude. I love going to a Browns. I them. love a good like a uh, what are they like twice fake fries. fries or whatever. A good like crispy steak fry. It can't the be like that are like. Dude, you ever fuck with a potato log? <laughs> it's just yeah. like a yeah potato log where it's just like a like a one fourth like a quarter of potato. It's like a big fucking log. Nice. It looks like a pickle spear, but it's oh. a potato log and it's nice. deep fried. Usually you get it at like gas stations and shit. Um. Yeah. Gas station, Gas station food rocks. Q, you're you, you're a man of the truth. Talking about QT because every everybody's on Bucky's now. Everybody's on Bucky's. Got Bucky's on the opposite side of the state, and it's good, but they don't have the candied jalapeno cream cheese dip. So that's kind of disappointing. There's there's a lot of Texas Bucky shit that don't have in the one in some Florence. Oh, I didn't even think about the that. Yeah. Side of the state. But I don't. But I am of the like opinion that Quick Trip is the that's the real shit. Like it's Bucky's, yeah, Bucky's is like a meme on the internet, and the real yeah. Texans know about that quick trip. All subs, all and all subs. What's all subs? <laughs> it's just another gas station. It has they have like really greasy, delicious burritos. We got one here called um, Spinx. Sounds like a slur. Yeah, it's like that. Sounds like some their mascot is shit. a Spinx, but it's called Spinx. I hate hearing people talk about Wawa. It pisses me off. Wawa is good. Wawa is good. Wawa, but that Spinks, you can get really good fried chicken. Wawa <laughs> has a seasonal sandwich for Thanksgiving called the Gobbler. Yeah, I've heard about it. Chiquita it's China. awesome, dude. It's a full Thanksgiving dinner in a sandwich. It's turkey, cranberry sauce, stuffing. It's just all on a hoagie. It's I'll so good. If I ever get up there again, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, Wawa's tight. Hell yeah. um, uh, oh, the best Gatorade. Um, it is the yellow in the glass jar with a metal top. <laughs> okay. Cleaner, right. it's, for, it's not nearly as thick, but you, they don't make it anymore. Once they yellow in a top, glass jar? Yes, yellow in the glass jar with the green logo on the front. I've never had what? Gatorade in a glass jar. What? Before your time, son. Yeah, this must have been... Yeah, that and gator gum, that's your rule, too. Put that shit on the wall in a glass bowl. Gator gum? What is gator gum? Gatorade made gum for a while as well. Oh, okay. I, I've never had Gatorade in a glass <laughs> jar. I've only ever had it in either plastic bottles or a, a big tub of like powder that you mix with some water. Yeah, that's your rules. But like nowadays, the lemon lime's fine. The white's okay. Fierce. You remember the fierce one? Like they had like Vince Carter and all. They the tried. Products? Yeah. It was all right. Yeah, I mean, oh, I've terrible. I've talked about it before. My favorite is the yeah the the seafoam green the the lime the limon pepino the lime cucumber. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah a it's a great good. one. That's... Hey, where y'all at on a uh, Mountain Dew Major Melon? That's a recent. Um, Major one. Melon's yeah. awesome. This Major Melon's really good. Major Melon's really good, it, but I don't drink soda anymore. Do you get the major up in here as one of our guests? That'd be a good episode. I would love to get Major Melon on the show. Oh, <laughs> he's seen some shit too. Still got some guys on the inside. I'll give him a call. See if he's yeah. Still- Major Mountain Melon, Dew's got to be as far as flavor variants go. Mountain Dew is, is winning. It, it's so funny because like I don't really care for Mountain Dew, just like right. Mountain but Dew. Baja but Baja Blast, Baja Blast yeah. is Baja like, Blast. Like on a cold day, uh, that also oh, Code dude. Red is really good. Going yeah. to a going to that a Gamer Taco Fuel Bell. when Gamer Fuel first came out when Halo Three, yeah. that shit fucking popped in the cans. That yeah. shit was awesome. the Master Chief uh, bottles. Yes, the Halo Three shit. It was like a in between a red and orange is a also of- all their other flavors are good like too yeah, like they, they, i haven't had a bad gatorade flavor or a bad uh, mountain dew flavor except for regular mountain dew yeah regular mountain dew is just okay yeah regular mountain dew is like whatever but baja blast I prefer, like surge dude i would put baja blast i had like two my- bottles of surge once got sick as a dog you, can't. you don't like surge it was too much i had two two regular bottles like right in a row and i I love Surge. You know, you know what doesn't get enough love. I, I would say is root beer. Like root beer is. I know. An you know, unsung I, hero. I need to bring back my root beer reviews. Dude, root beer is so Martins good. Down. You remember? Have you ever heard of a study called Moxie? Oh yeah, I've had Moxie. It tastes like pennies. Yeah. Do you remember when I was re- reviewing root beers on Facebook? Real? Oh yeah, I remember I, that. I, I would go to that place in Denton, the candy store, and I'd get like six different root beers. I need to do that again. I Dude, need to like I. That I love doing that, finding like all the different like weird root beers that are out there. There's so many. There, dude. And Bad some of them, spots. 
A and W. There's a lot of pop. Yeah, like obviously you have the go tos, you have the big brands like A and W's great, Barks, yeah. Mug, but then like you start getting into like Bundaberg. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of small town like root beer makers. Yeah, yeah Abita, St. Arnold's, local um, Virgil's. Like, yeah. there's some really good ones out there. And then, like, remember there was that place in Denton that made their own that, uh, was it Mr. Frosty? Yo, Mr. Frosty's <laughs> is so Frosty. fucking good. Yeah. That burger, bro. Like Fresh Market or um, Cracker Barrel, you get Mr. Frosty here. Bro, Mr. Frosty's, I still think about. There's Mr. a couple well, places. The place in we're talking about was just like, I don't think it was related to any other. It's just a place in Denton. It's like it's a small business called Mr. Frosty. It was old and had been there since like. A yeah, long and they the they make their own root beer there that was really good. It was really good. The food was really good. The corn dogs were off the chain. <laughs> Dude, they were real oh, state dogs. fair, corn real state so fair corn dogs. Corn dogs so, like, are awesome. I love corn dogs. <laughs> Listen, there's two places in Denton I think about a lot. That place and Genuzzi's. What is Genuzzi's? The best fucking pizza place around. And I pizza never, wings. I never even went there. I never even heard of that place. Uh, it was off Teasley. The only other Genuzzi's is in uh, Jersey, too. So you know it's uh, I stayed away from Teasley. Too much riffraff. Yeah. Uh, Genuzzi's was really fucking good. And then there, there was the Chinese... Uh, there was a Chinese buffet in Denton that was really good, too. That one the by the Albertsons. Yep. Terrible. Yep. That one was great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> cafe. China Cafe or something. Yeah, Chinatown Cafe. That was the yeah, that was the one like me, Joey, and Richie always went to. That was the one, man. That was a good one. Yeah, they've fallen off so hard, and it's really disappointing. I love buffets. <laughs> no, once you find a good Chinese buffet, you you put that in your mental marker. I mean, like set a really fucking waypoint. Anymore, like any good one I used to have in my area is fucking dog shit. When it comes you to Chinese just, food, not listen, that fine food anymore. This is the I've, struggle. I've, I've got to go to a couple different ones. You got to be willing to try bad ones. Yeah. I've had high quality Chinese food at this point in my life. I would much rather just go to a nice Chinese restaurant and get like a plate of food yeah. instead of go what to a Chinese buffet. About? I would rather get a nice plate of Chinese food instead of go to a Chinese buffet and get infinite plates of like okay empty. Chinese. It's, it's just empty. You just don't feel you're like you're not hungry anymore, but you're not satisfied. It's you all you can fun. eat. I know it's all you no, can but eat. It's not good food but you that's you're paying food. yeah but you know you're gonna leave like stuff you're gonna leave in pain you, because you've over you that you don't i'm that. eating like as i leave i have like the ice cream cones and stuff yeah, i would rather just go to like wo hop in new york and get like a nice plate of lo mein or cantonese style noodles. be hungry again in 10 minutes of It'd course be better quality though like just it's better nice quality it's it, it, you ever had a y'all ever had cream some young guy yes i've had cream oh, some young guy like um how was it cream so young guy <laughs> is that is that persona that was uh the evangelion okay that sounded like <laughs> oh. that volleyball game oh have you ever seen um there's a video called daikon 4 isn't daikon like a pickled radish um possibly but there's this animation conference in the early 80s and the guy of the guys who made evangelion started with these little they would make these videos before the um like conference it would be like a animation con and they did these animations and a lot of people who started evangelion came from making these it was like a, like, di- like a daikon 4 like high quality it's pretty cool. um yeah daikon is a pickled radish but then there's also it says here there is something called oh daikon d a i c o n and then daikon the radishes with the k. Yeah. In the animation, they do have that radish in there. So Don't I've never okay. I've never on. seen daikon four, but it is the the same animation studio. It says here it gets gynax. Yeah, this is before, this is when they were still in college. Okay. Are you wanting to do another uh, like a Patreon later in the week? Yeah, we're gonna have to. Yep, yeah, we, absolutely. We went, we went. Oh, Michael, you want to do a Patreon later in the week? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Well, have you made because we've already gone? We, I mean, we've already gone two hours. I got wing stop downstairs. Yeah, uh, eat your wing stop. We'll do a Patreon <clears throat> later in the week, maybe Wednesday. We gotta, yeah, we gotta dive more into Michael's uh life. Do you we have all into... of your uh co hosts Wednesday for your Crowder boys? Do you want you want the Crowder boys to join us on the Patreon? That would rule. That would no, I like, I'm... I like joining on the Crowder boys. <laughs> so oh, you want to be on the Crowder boys? Well, you're the unofficial um, fourth member of the Crowder Boys. Yeah, I don't want to, you know, that's why I'm not, you know, not too much, but uh, whenever possible. 
Speaking of folks, please subscribe to the Crowder Boys channel, youtube.com slash at the Crowder Boys, and then subscribe to the Patreon for this. Patreon.com slash corn fed with Dalton Pruitt. The numbers are uh dropping uh quite uh war- Shit. um I mean yeah, well, you know, Michael uh, got the decal, so he's got oh, I would, the en- Patreon I would encourage Michael to downgrade so he doesn't keep paying twenty five bucks a month. But the YouTube subscribes are up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, YouTube is going. YouTube's going great. Yeah, we're at almost um, two two thousand. Yeah, just yeah. Keep, always be, always a a always be be, p posting. Just keep, yeah. throwing keep throwing shit at the wall. Keep throwing. But shit yeah, Patreon's the going down. Gonna yeah, the pa- but that. yeah, that make I mean makes sense. Um, it's selling selling people on a Patreon is pretty tough. <laughs> that's why um, these the live uh streams are really cool the live i think yeah because i i do think that the era of patreon i don't know like it seems like the you know come town and chapo red scare tim dylan matt and shane like all these people got in at a good time to yeah. find success on patreon yeah no worries <clears throat> oh wait do i have a piss do i have anything for piss um no <laughs> yeah you need to add you need to we'll figure out the ones you need to add they'll be apparent like you know you probably wrote some down that's a fun one. Oh, what about remember the hor- this one there are three motherfucking people in this goddamn world three there's the man who owns the horse and gets the money there's the man who has the money and gets the horse and there's us, me, you, you, you. We jack off the fucking horses and we get nothing. Why do we jack off the horses? <laughs> I was following him until the end. And You've never like, seen yeah, that yeah, video. Yeah. I, I clipped I clipped just that sound bite. It's like because it's like a four minute video and it's some punk like hardcore punk band. And the guy, the singer is delivering this um message to the audience or is some interlude between songs where he's telling them about a job he had once where he had to jack off horses for some guy. Oh he's oh, yeah. jacking off horses. Yeah they and he got, about that. Yeah and he got he got paid like like a dollar an hour or something to jack off uh, these horses. A dollar an ounce. A dollar an ounce. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so the getting paid so by the, the loads, son. Yeah, and Start so it all it, it all culminates in his message being: "There's three motherfucking people in this goddamn world." There's the that's man. what I would think on as I'm jacking off horses and I see people coming to buy them and stuff. I would think, yeah, I'm I'm that third person. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I'm not like them. We jack off the horses and we get nothing, <laughs> nothing. They actually have a horse bussy for them to bust in. It's a, it's a hussy. Yeah, they don't have to actually jerk them off. They, <laughs> they like sort of trick them because they can't see where their dick goes. So they put this fucking fake sleeve next to the pussy and they sort of psych them out and then they don't know any different. And then they you tell just, me that that doesn't feel weird. They're like, man, it feels like my dick is like being pulled to the right. They they come so fast they don't care. Yeah, just horses, like, they're so close horses to come. come like, just get the poison out. Get the gallons of poison the, out. You see that that pedophile in like Mississippi? They're gonna physically castrate them. What? Okay. <laughs> His singing voice is gonna be angelic. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's gonna be an. Uh, yeah, he's gonna be really good. No, I mean Castrato. Oh yeah, just some wild fucking South shit. Yeah, dude, the South is wild. Remember that? I think it was in Alabama. Uh, because I guess they nobody was supplying the prisons with the proper uh serums to do lethal injection. So they were like, "All right, we're gonna try something new. We're just gonna fucking uh pump them full of nitrogen." To I do... watched John Oliver too. Oh, like uh, Han Solo? No, like a reverse Han Solo. No, Han like, Solo. they were like drowning in their own like lung fluids. They're having a hey. How, well, what what method of execution would y'all pick? Firing squad. Not like a gallow, like a no. I don't, I don't want to be. You want your head to, You want your head to stay attached. Just fucking shoot me. Yeah. yeah, but what about you? Don't think one of those guys is gonna shoot you in the dick? No, like a shot. I would. Shot, I mean, shot. as long as one of the shots kills, I would. Me. I'd be that one I feel, guy. It's I like, feel like how they're they gonna know? Well, they've only got like a couple bullets. Not everyone in the firing squad has a live round. Yeah, because so my my fear. 
Yeah, my fear with lethal injection is like, okay, so yeah, it incapacitates you, like it paralyzes you, but there's no way to know if that person is just in excruciating pain, but they no, can't move. I wouldn't move pick or... that one either. Yeah, so it's like uh, to me, the most humane is always yeah, seen like squad. firing squad. Or um just get your head chopped off. Like, yeah, talk. just the dude, okay. they had a really good system back in the day. It was clean. Did you see that cartel guy that got like dumped in the ocean? Dude. I yes. saw that. That is bone chilling. But why, was, would you, why would you think you could get one over on these guys? Why would I, you dude, that's crazy. Because, I mean, they'll cut your head off if you look at them weird. Yeah, yeah. so honestly, he got it. He kind of got away, like, pretty easy. Like, what do you think about They could have Yeah, tortured. I mean, at least they didn't those peel his minutes, face off. Those, those yeah. fucking five minutes are rough. What would you do? Did, did you? Wow. Yeah, I would I hold do? my breath, dude, till I got to the bottom, and then I would bust out. Mm-hmm. I would do the same thing. Yeah, I would do that. Yeah. Hit your shoulder. Did you then I would, see? Then I'd find the boat and I'd jump up on it and like fucking. Yo, ah. did you did you see that you guy that? The weapon too? Uh, <laughs> did you see that guy who would like cobble together some like? It was like a like a Louisiana Mississippi fan boat, but attached to a parachute. Oh, he like, crashed. Yeah, he had some. No, that's a real flying machine. Whatever it was, it was. It was that's like a, a legit thing. It was like a chair with a fan on it that was attached yeah. to a uh, parachute. People do that. And he was he was flying through the air, and he goes, "Woo, forty eight miles an hour!" And yeah, the yeah. drops out of the sky. Then he but breaks his. He broke his you neck don't see and his back. Catches though. There's like he didn't hit a wire or anything. I have no idea what like, happened. Drops instantly, and he just like laying there for. A and while. he got it at every angle. It's such a beautiful video. <laughs> yeah. He did. He did. Dude. Those nine one one operators, like, can you have a little fucking compassion? You have like, any idea how many times? I'm gonna put you. Food. I'm gonna transfer you, sir. Is that okay? All right. Every it's like I'm dying. The worst thing in the world. Every fucking time, you gotta, you gotta fucking disassociate, dude. Dis- disassociate yourself. Well, tell me it's gonna be okay, honey. A couple. Do you times. know the you story know I mean? of nine. By the way, do you know the story of nine one one? The TV yeah, show. Yeah. The two fucking planes hit the world trade center no, no. Yeah. the actual the act like why why we have 911 as a number and then we sent a million guys like William michael Shatner fucking up needed something to stay relevant after tj hooker went off the air there was <laughs> there was this lady in new york i have i forget how long ago this was um her name was kitty genovese and oh yeah she was getting like brutally murdered nobody her, knew who to call and she kept screaming like Fuck, help, help. And Call my sister in law. Yeah, and everyone in everyone on <laughs> that blog. Two, five, four, three, seven, yeah. one, one, five, she, five, they eight. just kind of ignored Call the baby. They just kind of ignored her. Like she's screaming, like, hey, I'm getting murdered. And nobody helped her. And so it was this big high profile case. What was she wearing? <laughs> yeah. Uh Probably, you know, like a blouse or maybe like one of them. Honestly, though, that still ass. happens nowadays. It like, definitely still me, happens. But people get stomped awesome. by gangs of, of other people, and I'm not, I'm not jumping in to join that. Yeah, but I mean, it was this big high profile thing because it was like, well, this lady was fuck, like screaming for help, and nobody, nobody even tried to help her. She must and have been so free. that's the only reason we know about it. Yeah, so they implemented a way for people to reach the emergency services on their own. What were they doing before that? Just, I guess, just screaming. Go flag down an officer. <laughs> yeah. Um, they didn't think of that. They didn't think of making a fucking hotline once they started. Very few people had phones. Yeah, people didn't really have phones. I don't, dude. I don't know. I don't, I don't know much about <laughs> the past. It, it just looks like the past fucking sucked. Yeah, and like a telegram is going to take a long time. You're long dead by the, the time. past sucked, and then it was really fucking nice and luxurious, and now it sucks again. It does. Yeah, yeah it seems like there was a like a zenith for culture yeah. and civilization. Yeah, there was, was a peak. Not, you're not supposed supposed to know too much outside of your little circle. Like the fact yeah. that you know what's going on in the entire world. Like we're not supposed to know the entire world. It it does we're seem like the, those two decades, like the 80s and 90s. It seems like yeah. okay, that was probably the best it ever got. At least for Americans and maybe like yeah. other developed countries, and then nine like nine eleven happens and it's like okay now it's everything's gonna go to dog shit. Yeah, nine eleven ruined everything. Nine eleven yeah. fucking sucks, yeah. dude. I, I can't even fucking, I can't have sucks. lasagna on an airplane. Where were you when nine eleven happened, Michael? I was in AIT, like. Like I was in USAC. Oh, you were in the okay. Yeah, like basic training. I was in fourth grade. It was great. 
then like we hear about it and then we get to the back to our barracks and we see what's on tv i'm like oh fuck Bro, getting- i was in fifth grade I so, where were you he was in training you was in like was kindergarten. Adult, where were you? oh me i was in third yeah. grade yeah oh, i was in third grade, in fifth grade and it was it was on the tvs like they were showing it to us no we had to and, go home yeah and then like all the parents started coming and like picking everyone up we had security I remember for the rest of the time in AIT, like to protect everything, like as if they were going to attack every military base. Like after, yeah, that. we couldn't even go outside and play. It's yeah. Cool. Oh yeah, like I remember because we were, we were living in um, I think we were we were living in North Carolina at the time, and there was this very like pervasive fear like that day, and then I guess for years following that everywhere in the country was now a target uh, people North in Carolina like, was next yeah people on the outskirts of Raleigh like whatever little town we lived in they were like well they're coming for us they're, they're gonna, gonna take attack over us the, next the yeah town hall Jacksonville yeah so the, yeah there was a lot of anti I, would, uh, I mean I was upstate but I was still in New York so it was it felt kind of a lot closer to home for you a yeah. little urgent yeah well I'll say this the new tower looks so much better than the twin tower yeah those other two, the Twin Towers were so... The ugly. Twin Towers were so drab, so brutal. And, I mean, obviously not designed very well. So no, I mean, I'm sure they... Uh, what do you mean? I, it's, co- it's collapsible. I guess I guess you're right. <laughs> like, was that a feature? Like, they're, they're supposed to fall in like that? You have they, to make them so they can be brought down safely. They were hideous buildings, whereas the Freedom Tower now looks really beautiful. It's a nice-looking building. Yeah, and a um, lot of those people were unhappy in their jobs, too. That's true. A lot of them were just, I mean, slaving away, nine to five, sometimes later. Um, Not too bad. Maybe I got to learn. The way they, the towers collapsed, though, huh? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll get into that, I guess, on the Patreon. <laughs> it's super weird. Uh? <laughs> I swear you need the rest. Oh, yeah. That's just an intro to the first Town. You need the longer version. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't want you yeah, because Come Town used it, used the full thing uh, for a while. Oh, really? But, but well, yeah, but the... thing, like, what's, what's Adam Friedland's deal? That fucker is not funny. <laughs> is, like, is Nick Mullen just like, is this just his ego? Like, I'm going to make the unfunniest person I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, I don't know. I don't an know. an entire show around the unfunniest human I've ever met. I don't know either of them that well uh, outside of like what I've seen on the internet. I've, I've met Nick a couple times. Um, I think they're just like legitimately friends. Like, I think they just yeah. are good friends. It seems like Adam just knows people. And he's not really all that funny. Yeah, I think there's definitely groups. an aspect to podcasting and comedy where you'll have like, you know, like a big dog. You'll have like some guy who's really, really funny and talented who uh, bl- blesses other people with his. Yeah. Um... Adam looks like a guy <laughs> who's never dated a woman he is stronger than. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it does seem like with Nick that there was a, that he was like, you know, see, I guess like transferring some sort of a juice to these other guys that allowed them to have their success. Cause I don't, um, the, yeah, I, it seems like people flock to Nick and then they just find, you know, Adam happens to be there. And then it seemed like that was the case with Stahl for a while now. That's guess, all right. Yeah. He sort of finds himself to being a good hang. At least yeah. He knows what- I can tolerate that. He knows yeah, what he I, is. I guess it's it's sort of like vampires. How there'll be like a like a elder vampire who turns a bunch of people. Yeah. Mm, you know, I started watching uh, what we do in the shadows. It's really good. And that's how we talk in Tucson, Arizona. In Tucson, Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> Bat. Did <laughs> what the that. fuck did you just say to me? <laughs> Dude, it's it just hit just the way he talks is worth watching. It's amazing, you know? Matt Barry. Yeah, you really Barry. are the most devious bastard in New York City. New York City. <laughs> Dude, he's so funny. Yeah, yeah. such a uh, bombastic voice. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Adam seems like a good dude though. Like uh from what I hear, he he seen I think he knows his place, and I think he's just very grateful to have success. It doesn't seem like he's trying to get too big for his britches. He's like, like another rich kid. Like he's he definitely i think he's a rich kid yeah i think Man, I, think, I wish i grew up rich yeah nick nick is definitely nick definitely grew up poor 
or has yeah. been was poor for a long time. Um, and so you know, I guess there's there's some relatability there. I guess I guess the same with Shane. Like I think Shane comes from a pretty working class background. Yeah, and he's he's another elder vampire where there's just tons of other podcasts and. Dude, I've I've it's so fun. like I've seen people like just through being friends with Shane that have been able to like finally get off of food stamps just because they know Shane. I think. Oh, well, I'm I'm gonna stay on food stamps as long as I can. Doesn't matter. Yeah, of course. Got you, coming in. Yeah, but I I think Shane I think Shane is responsible for lifting probably like most of uh like Philadelphia and the surrounding area out of poverty. That's good. This I think good. so. Yeah, Shane's a cool dude though. Like I don't, I don't know him too well, but I've I interacted with him some, and he is like he's a very genuine guy. Yeah, there's there's a few of them out there who seem all right. I can, I'll, I'll fuck with him. Yeah, yeah. Some, some some are just phonies. You can just tell. Yeah, there's definitely yeah. I mean, you could. That's the thing is like you can always kind of <laughs> tell. You know, like I I remember like being at the stand one night and Tim Dillon came through and is he actually gay? I don't actually think he's gay. <laughs> But it, it, the in the brief interaction I had with him, it did seem like I I guess he's not really a phony because he does pr- he's very honest about what he is. But I found it to be um, not uh, not that enjoyable. <laughs> Just Dude, that. I always thought that was James Corden. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm googling them now. They're two different people. They're both British, though, so I can understand. Yeah, yeah. Doing. Tim Dillon is like spiritually British. Yeah. He's, he sees himself as royalty. Oh, um, Sal. Sal. All right. What sort of, what's your favorite um, Girl Scout cookie, Sal? Oh, uh, Samoas. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. You ever put Thin Mints in the freezer? No, I have a case of Thin Mints. I need put to put them in that. the freezer and put like, them in the freezer. Put them in the freezer. Hit them up tomorrow. If they sound like poker chips when you drop in your hand, they're fucking perfect. Yeah, my okay, favorite still, is uh, tagalongs. Yeah, tagalongs. Chocolate, chocolate I like cover. the lemon ones too. Yeah, the peanut butter ones. Yeah, um, or like you guys like cheese it. Uh, I like the ones that are like baked more. Put those in the freezer as well. All right, those are good. That's funny bones. Funny bones are awesome. Let's take it in for a landing. Let's get one more question, and then we'll we'll do a Patreon at some point. Oh, he's got the boys got questions. I know he's got questions. We've been going. We've been going like two and a half hours. Yeah, but we just I got mean, these questions. I got we wings. Got we've we've covered I most got of them tonight. Wings. Though. We'll we, do a Patreon. Got, yeah, we'll come back to the Patreon. We'll have some more shit. Yeah, we, we've we've done well. No complaints. You sounded like R. Kelly when you said that. I got wings. I got wings. Can fly. What's up, y'all? <laughs> you know what time it is. It's about to be that time. I love Stephen A. Smith. He's gonna say Evangelion at one point. He's got. I've been trying to get him to say. I just want to hear him try and say Evangelion. Like, um, do you have like a black comedian? You could have him like, like, dude, have a black comedian reach. And I'm talking to you, Evan Angelin. <laughs> Evangeline Evan Lily. <laughs> Oh, yeah. uh, oh, I definitely didn't watch that show. Not me either. That missed me. <laughs> that missed oh, me. I love this Dragon Ball Z. Z. Oh, we must have come to the art of peace in addition to the art of war. I love right. that one. This will be my greatest, most powerful time. I gotta adjust the volume. Those are very loud. My son showed me one today. It was just um, Goku going on a racist rant. <laughs> it was just like the voice actor just dropping end bumps all over the place. It was pretty funny. Yeah, dude. Kids are so funny now. They're they're so in tune to what's funny. Dude, yeah. I was him on his Discord is just talking I... to his other twelve year old friends and like it's just a, the same shit we thought was funny when we were twelve. That's of course. Yeah, dude. I was getting these. Uh, I was going to these like ketamine therapies uh, with this doctor. And oh, yes, time... I tried to do that. I have, I have that written down. Oh, you did the ketamine therapy? No, they wouldn't let me. I'm not sick enough. Oh, okay, yeah, I was fucked up. So they were like, they, okay, they yeah. Said we'll I do... need to be on at least, they said I need at least four attempts at uh, taking antidepressants. 
and I don't take anything. So. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I was well. Yeah, over I thought you were gonna four. say four attempts of taking your life, and I was like, whoa, <laughs> they're I really was not sick enough. Just really ima- imagining the guy who keeps trying to kill himself just to get ketamine. <laughs> Does this count? <laughs> I fell asleep in the in the garage of the car. Yeah. On, so on yeah, or dog. Uh, yeah, yeah, dog. I took try. this entire bottle of ibuprofen. Can I do ketamine now? <laughs> um i mean that's like taking ketamine no one time i during one of these ketamine uh sessions i was like deep in the k-hole and but i still managed to like pick up my phone that I had with me and i like don't know why i like thought of this or why why this is what i wanted to look at during my ketamine trip but i watched a video of a uh, sora fighting sora from kingdom hearts fighting goku and i it like truly like the combination of ketamine and that video made me feel like i had like shifted dimensions okay, I, was, nice. I was like scared i was like oh this is i'm not even in my own reality anymore i'm in a reality now where sora and goku are fighting each other and this is you know this has never happened before there's nothing better than getting so high that like you, you know videos are cool yeah <laughs> like yeah. You know, when you're there's nothing level. better than getting so high that you can finally enjoy things. Yeah, yes. you can just put on anything and like love it. <clears throat> um, happy for a moment. Shit rocks. Yeah, but we we should we should bring this one in for a landing. I mean, yeah, yeah, because yeah, I mean, your wings are cold. It's fine. My wings are cold, but also you got to take into consideration these 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 are big files. You know, we do shows this long, and it takes me forever to get these up on YouTube. Um. But also, you know, I mean, we've been we 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 did a good hey, we did a good episode. This here. was great. It was Michael, good... it was great meeting you. Michael, it was fun, man, this has been a lot of fun. Michael, you rock! Good. Like, we got to get to know we got to yeah. get to know you better. So we'll I would love that. This we'll a schedule a Patreon for this week, and we'll do that. <clears throat> um, yeah, we got to so get folks, into who is Michael Hall. We got to get into who is Anthony Michael Hall oh, God. Or, or, or Anthony Michael C Hall. <laughs> Anthony Michael C Hall. <laughs> 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 Uh, so yeah, we'll do that. Uh, but you, yeah, you're great, and uh, I appreciate you supporting the show. I was, I was nervous going into this because I was like, oh, I've actually never, I don't know who this is. <laughs> I don't know who this guy is. I was a little nervous, but I got, I came prepared, and I've, I've done podcasts like ten years ago. Me and my friends did a podcast. So damn, like, you, no, you, you have a now. very well, no, sparkling. Not... <laughs> you could be rich right now. You have no, a very no. sparkling personality. You're very affable. Well, lost everything, and I'm just on the other side of it all. Also, like, you should, should consider long law time. enforcement. What's up? You do look like a cop a little bit, so yeah, I get that a lot. I'm not I'm fucking cop. No, you just have a good ass haircut, dude. That's um, good. yeah, I love the the what is the high and tight or taper yeah, fade or whatever it is. I fade with zero on the side. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, but I no, I appreciate you, Michael. You you've been a great supporter of this program of Crowder Boys. Uh. And I figured I figured you'd probably be cool considering the uh, the amount of support and uh, both spiritual and financial you've shown everything we do. So this, this, yeah, this has been great. And we'll yeah we'll we'll definitely continue this on the Patreon, folks. This has been corn fed with Dalton Pruitt only on the the Billionaire Podcast Network. <laughs> did, did Jarvis. Love that. Yeah. Um, Jarvis. <laughs> Jarvis. <laughs> Wait. Spark my wife. <laughs> Dude, the soundboard's fun. All right. Thanks, everybody. And uh, stop.